Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah ba'amin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ishrafil anbiya ibn salin wa ala alihi wa sallam bin ma'in. Allah wa sallam ala alihi wa Alhamdulillah. Thank you to all participants for being able to allocate your precious time to attend this webinar. Uh, let us start with Surah Al-Fatihah and Surah Al-Quran Nabi Muhammad SAW. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad an nabi dati wa siri sari fi sa'iri al-asma'i wa sifat Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad in fatihi lima u'iqa wal khutm lima sabaq wa nasiri al-haq bil-haq al-hali ila suratika al-mustaqim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi haq wa qaduhi wa mikudana azim amal ba' Okay, I am Dr. Farah, Deputy Director Innovation and Commercialization Unit known as INC, RMC, IUM Alhamdulillah today Okay, we have invited a subject matter expert on IP related matters to give a talk. Um, that is Encik Irfan Awang, CEO of Patentsworth International, a company that has successfully helped many researchers to understand what is basic IPs, fundamental knowledge related to IPs, groom the IPs, file the IPs, and commercialize the IPs. Inshallah, we are going to have a benefit. A lot of belief on Cik Irfan Awang, knowledge and experiences. Allow me to read more on his biography. Um, he is a chemical engineer by profession, and Cik Irfan is very well versed with chemical engineering. He worked as a process engineer in a large palm oil company for a couple of years and joined one of the Malaysia's most reputable law firms, where he learned valuable intellectual property experience. Helping clients in patents, trademarks, industry designs, copyrights, layout designs of integrated circuit, the geographical indications, and plan variety protections. He has attended and conducted many international conferences, seminars, as well as IP courses, including JPAA IP Practitioner Bangkok, which is I do not know what is JPAA. The International Federation of International Property uh, Attorneys, FICPI, Southeast Asia Patent Drafting Course, the Japan Patent Office, JPO, IPR for Practitioners, and etc. 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 Specializing in patent and IP innovation special program by Korean Patent Attorneys Association, which is jointly organized by University of California and Seoul National University. He speaks frequently at seminars and workshops on the subject of patent practice, interpretation on patent claim, patent search, trademark, industrial design, copyright, and other IP topics. He is also a panel judge for IP evaluation and business pitching session for numerous corporate corporations, universities, and research institutes. And Chief Irfan's um, advice on identification of patentable inventions, patent specification drafting, prosecution of Malaysian and overseas patent applications, trademarks, industry design, copyrights, IP commercialization, and enforcement. Uh, what is freedom to operate? This, the, his advice are very much sought after by clients and clicks alike playing a key role in decision-making process for product launches, both in Malaysia and foreign markets. So I think we have a very um, young and talented Chifan and very knowledgeable speakers with us today. So hopefully everyone will get benefit from it. And without further ado, Chifan, I pass the mic over to okay. you. We pray that many of us will benefit from this seminar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, a very blessed morning to all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Farah, for a very kind introduction. Okay. Um, thank you to IMCRMC for organizing this um, event and uh, the initiative that they have uh, you know, uh, come up with is, must be uh, applauded. And uh, it is something that not every university have uh, the initiative. You know? So uh, I hope that we um, you know, very um, 
very short period of time today for us to discuss the essential five P. There's a lot of topics need to be discussed, but before um, we carry on, I would like to thank you too to all participants today for joining us. Okay, for making the time and uh, uh for to this session despite your busy schedule. Okay, be whether you from IUM Gomba campus or Kuantan campus. So uh, at the background, you know we. Both of us from the we are the from the firms and the INCRMC uh, actually manage uh, uh, plan a lot of programs, but due to uh, unfortunate event COVID and etc. to we have to do um, an online um, well, in a webinar, but um, we think that it will benefit uh, many of us here. Okay, so for today's session, uh, it's going to be very casual and nothing formal, nothing going to be restricted, nothing to be, uh, you know, uh, very protocol. Uh, it's going to be very casual. And I really hope that uh, all of you can participate in today's uh, webinar because we have prepared not, I would say, selected content for all of you today. So uh, when we talk about the essential of uh, IP, there's so many things that you know that we will, we we wish that we can share, but due to the interest of time, then we have to be selective, lah. So not all points can be released. Not point. Uh, some matter we have to be filtered out, and etc. But I leave it to all the participants today. If you have a a, a specific topic that you want us to uh, share with you or you want to discuss, just feel free, okay, to uh, you know uh, intercept the session, interject the session, and we can discuss it further. Okay, uh, a bit introductions. Uh, yeah, as ministries, my name is your fun. So um, I'm the founder and CEO of this firm, Patterns World. So it is an IP boutique firm that we focus on intellectual property. And then uh, early last year, we introduced uh, Academy, Antares Academy, it's for education, training, and uh, strategic corporate management, and uh, also commercialization of IP. So right now, Antares is focusing on strategic corporate management for SME here in Malaysia, how to survive and how to launch the product, how to uh, do product grooming, how to entrepreneurship grooming, how to get a lot of entrepreneurship uh, things in their mind. And uh, we also um, work with several agencies to for training, etc. So these two form IA group of companies. <laughs> okay, so this is the poster of the day. Okay, so uh, please see my face over there because there are two faces over here. Okay, so we have actually we have two sessions. So uh, session number one is right now what we have in the morning. Okay, and then we have a second session which is in the afternoon. So the first session will be a lecture. Okay, and the second session is a one-to-one -one IP cleaning. So it's uh, you can join the both session, but for the second session you you need to book the slot. So you can contact uh Chi Ami, brother Ami to uh, book your slot, to make an appointment. It's going to be uh, a very private one-to-one -one IP clinic. So if you have, a, for example, uh, not necessary that you need to have a uh, issue related to commercialization, but it can be uh, from very beginning, such as um, IP discovery, or you're not sure how to protect this, or you receive few grants, but the outputs, et cetera, et cetera. No, it can be uh, any issues or it can be uh, any um, topic that you wish to have a more uh, private sessions uh, with a representative from practitioner from us, as well as a representative from uh, INCRMC. So this will help you to, uh, you know, this is early of the year, so you know, uh, buckle up and this is how you plan for the entire year or maybe perhaps for your FRJ or PRJS that's soon going to be awarded. Lah. So this, the first session is a lecture session again, I repeat, uh, and the second, uh, the ses session number two is a one-to-one -one session, private session. If I really, really encourage you to join the session number two, uh, it's not open to all, it's going to have a 30-minute session slot for each and every one of uh, the participants, and then, uh, yeah, this is your chance, actually, <laughs> this is your chance. If you were to have this engagement with um, any IP practitioner that you have to pay, and uh, these are billable hours. So this is something that you must grab the chance and the opportunity won't knock twice, I would say. So please grab uh, this opportunity in session number one and both session number two. Okay, what 
are the main news of the day. Uh, untuk hari ini, so we have uh, selected uh, some topic lah, you know, for you to understand from and also to the benefit of the university researcher. So we're going to have uh, number one on the intellectual property. We're going to introduce you the trade secret, uh, copyright, industrial design. Then we have a break somewhere here around 10 to 30. But regardless uh, which topic that uh, we are at at the point of time, we're going to stop at 10 to 30 and then uh, we continue. Uh, we're going to take a break for 15 minutes. And then later we continue with trademark and pattern or whatever topic they continue from the previous session. Lah. So we have um, a QA session at 1215. Uh, we allocated 30 minutes. But no worry, if you have any question throughout the session, just let us know and then interject the session. Again, this is a casual session. Lah. Don't be shy. Okay. You guys from IUM. Okay. And uh, you know. Uh, I think uh, you, I think you have a lot of questions, and our experience of finding university researcher, they usually have a lot of questions, and uh, you know maybe um, uh, did, maybe limited to only to their uh, situation, or maybe for the benefit of the rest. Okay, to start of our day, we're going to have a pop quiz. Okay, so this pop quiz uh, is something that we want to survey. Okay, uh, how you're understanding about intellectual etc. So I have posted uh, a link on the chat box. So check out the chat box now. And uh, I think there are less than 10 questions, less than or equal to 10 questions. And this will free, I'll give you a few minutes, uh, you know, and see how many people are going to attend to this um, uh, pop quiz. So, uh, you can you can be anonymous. Not necessarily have to put your name there. Later on, we're going to discuss um, what is the answers to you know, the question that we have. Okay, so great one on the way. A few more participants. It's, it's going to be interesting. Trust me. Okay, two on the way. Great. It's a very basic question about trademark, about patenting, about design, micro. Um, Suruhanjaya Syarikat Malaysia, etc. So, yeah, quite fine. We are very good. You know what? This is a very, uh, very good response from my AUM. Six underway. Well, also, this is also to buy some time like, for those who just came in. Okay, so uh, please answer the um, pop quiz. Okay, and then. We're going to discuss right away after this. Kalau ada masalah, you can ask me. You don't understand the certain part. But you don't have to Google. Like, it's very straightforward uh, questions. <laughs> OK, so we have questions about uh, how do you think a brand name or logo can be protected? Pretty straightforward, right? So, what else? We have a question about pattern, protect, the way someone does business. Apa lagi? We have uh, industrial design protection can last forever. We also have a quiz on patterns can last forever. And we have another question on uh, Registering a company name at Surahanjaya Sharikat Malaysia, SSM, protects the trademark against copier. Hmm. Okay. So we have total of 14 participants. At least we have um, how many? 10, 10 of you completed the pop quiz and we're going to uh, discuss uh, the answers. Much like exam, I must must say, it's a good exam. That's quite fast, huh? IAUM. 
other participants, not IUM lah, you know, they're taking time to answer this uh, simple power quiz. I guess it must be a different culture that you have there at IUM. Different pace and different speed. Oh yeah, so at the same time, you can share the links, uh, not the links, you can share, you can invite a few uh, more of your colleagues or friends that uh, maybe not aware about this seminar or maybe they, they forgot about it. Let's share the link again to them and uh, hope that they can join us at a later time when they're free. <laughs> okay, seven, so we wait for another two and then we're going to discuss. Okay, one more person completing the pop quiz. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Nine person has uh, answered the pop quiz. Now we're going to discuss. <laughs> okay, how do you think a brand name or logo can be protected? 67% jawab trademark, 33% jawab copyright. So for this one, the answer is trademark. Lah. So for a logo or brand name, IUI, IUM names, etc., the convocation logo that you have a very nice one, 38 conversation. Hand. So it can be protected under trademark. Uh, copyright cannot protect a brand name or logo. Okay. The next question, how oh, do you think... But Chirfan, Chirfan, there are uh, certain instances in our uh, university where we submitted a uh, logo or trademark as copyright and it is accepted by my IPO. Oh, okay. That's the thing. Because yeah. uh, under the copyright, there's no examination. Whatever okay, yeah, you yeah, whatever you submitted, it will be just accepted by the MIPO because you pay the MIPO. <laughs> they will just accept and then whatever protection you get, you, you will only get uh, the protection under the copyright law. But if your concern is about the brand name or logo, you have to go under trademark. So there's two different uh, area or two different uh, IP domain together. I will explain what's the difference with trademark and copyright. If you submit a trademark, if you submit industrial design and copyright, the MIPO will still accept it because of, because of your side. The, the things is that, uh, they understand that you wish to submit the, the literary work of the logo, but you are not going to have a protection under a trademark law. So you're going to have a very different protection. Okay. So the second question, how do you think an invention, for example, a smart bagless vacuum cleaner can be protected? This is great. So if you talk about inventions, okay, that usually involve the technical aspect of it, the technical character, the technical uh, part of it. So you have to go under patent law. But if you have, you are talking about uh, housing, the shape of the uh, vacuum cleaner, like the one from Dyson, the one from Samsung, then you can get protection under industry design. So what industry can give protection to you? What type of protection that patent give to you? You have to stay tuned. We're going to explain later. What the difference between these two? Even you submit pattern under industry, then my will still accept it. But the protection you get is not what you want. All right. So the next question: Telling people about invention before applying for a pattern could lead to an unsuccessful application. The answer for this is true, and also can be false. But in this case, in Malaysia at least, the answer is true. Okay, because once you have disclosed invention to any third party at public, okay, uh, you, you're going to prejudice the patent application later on. So in Malaysia, we have this 12 month grace period. If it happens within that time frame, then you are safe. But it happens beyond that time window, and then nah, you, you, are, you are not able to get a patent protection already. So because of the earlier disclosure that you made. So yeah, 33% Jawa, I'm not sure. But you're going to get all the answer for this at the pattern section later on, okay? Pattern protects the way someone does business. Ah, you know what? The answer for this is false. 
none of you that is correct. So pattern does not protect the way someone does business. So why? Because the way someone does business falls under non-patentable subject matter. So you, we're going to discuss about this later on. So 70% jawab true and 22% jawab not sure. So that means that uh, IMC, RMC have to do a lot more uh, awareness program to all the members of uh, IUM because this is very basic information about IP and CISO. This is how we do some survey. So we want to see how uh, you're understanding towards IP. Lah. So patterns can last forever. The answer for this is false. So patterns have like a gardenia roti, lah, it's just for a few days. So patterns also last for 20 years from the date of filing. So nah, nothing lasts forever. <laughs> okay, registering a company name at SSM protects a trademark against copier. The answer for this is false. Okay, SSM and MyPool are two different entities. The fact that you have registered your name, ABC, Sundar Brahat, and SSM, doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a, pro a trademark protection at my pool for ABC Sanamrahat. So there are two different entities, there are two different law, there are two different acta altogether. So these are the things that you need to know. SSM is different, my pool is different. And at my pool also have different IP domain, have trademark, in our design, copyright, patent, etc. Okay. To protect a piece of food with copyright, it must be registered with the Malaysian IP office or my pool. The answer for this is false. The answer for this is false. So not necessarily you must register your copyright with my pool to enjoy protection for copyright. Why? You stay tuned and we have some answer justification for why you don't have to submit a my pool. But if for the purpose of you getting a point in Myra, session of Myra, then you have to submit because it counts. But to enjoy protection, you don't have to. 50-50 lah, 11%. Not sure. Okay. Then industrial design protection can last forever. Uh, same, same goes to pattern and your roti gardenia. Nothing lasts forever. So ID lasts for only 25 years. So the answer for this is false. Huh? Okay, 25 years only. After that, we enter public domain. And then Sesiapa can use the inventions and then what? They don't have to pay you royalty. They don't have to get license from you. They don't have to get a consent from you. Okay. Shops and restaurants can legally play music to their customers without a license. The answer for this is false. Cannot legally play music. Like the Kedai Mama and everything, you know, without a license. This is, this is where we have a Lambaga music, the MRM, etc., royalty collecting body. If you want to play a music at a lobby, or if you want to play music, even at both, if, uh, in, a, in a flight, you know, it's a, uh, in a flight, a lobby, where else, uh, during uh, the transit time, or maybe you want to play a music, you invited a singer to perform at your annual dinner, grand dinner. And you still have to get a license from uh, PBT, and then the PBT will link you to the uh, what type of song, and then how many hours etc. Then we count a royalty, and you have to pay. So the royalty come the the license to conduct a annual dinner come with the uh, if you have entertainment, and then even Ashit also you still have to pay royalty. You pay royalty to the singer yes, but you also have to pay royalty to the composer and lyricist through a proper channel. So same goes for this thing. Uh, if you uh, can recall Astro, you know, and when, when Kadema Ma play or project on the white screen, the big screen, broadcasting a live session of a football match, it is an offense. They are safe at the moment because F Astro still don't want to take any legal action against them. Okay, so doing that, you know, whatever young people do go can tell, doesn't mean that it's right. So to, to legally play music, you need to get a license. Okay, so upper cover. Okay, so good. So uh, you have got you guys in a green mood, so it's a good mood. And then we're going to move on, okay, to our very first topic, uh, which is intellectual property. So dalam intellectual property, this is something that maybe many of us Oh, I know about IP, pattern, trademark, but do we really know what are the definition of trademark? 
what are the definition of pattern what are the definition of design what are the definition of uh, copyright and etc all of these things are very important in order for you to uh, uh, to to plan your journey especially in research r d so when we talk about r d okay suka atau tidak you cannot get away from intellectual property never ever whatever output that come up from the r d it is a question of mind so when it there is a question of mind there's a protection to it so uh introduction on uh, ip there are two branches number one is the industrial property we call industrial property and the second one is copyright so the reason why copyright doesn't fall in the industrial property because copyright has a lack of industrial elements so copyright usually protect the literary and artistic creations okay so it's also referred to the author's right uh, so what is copyright nanti i will what are the category of copyright now you have to stay tuned with me so what falls under industrial property pattern industrial design trademark your design of ic geographic indication and brand variety protection okay so um ip is an umbrella term Okay, why the core umbrella? Because bawah umbrella, there's a lot of IP domains. Now we have pattern, trademark, industrial design, copyright, geographic indication, layout design of IC, plant variety protection, trade secret. Okay, there's so many things under IP, and all of them give different protection. All of them have a different definition. Okay, highly unlikely they will overlap with each other. If you talk about pattern. And then it refers to something that have technical effect, something that have technical character, something that involves technicality, okay? Such as uh, the mechanical uh, inventions, pharmaceutical inventions, um, uh, computer invention, etc. Trademark is a name. Uh, imagine this. Uh, pattern is the main body of invention. Trademark is a name tag. It's a name tag, which is a name that you give to the product okay industrial design protect the aesthetic part of invention so uh metaphor is that industrial design uh is a baju it's a cloth that you don onto your invention or your product and on top of that clothes you have a name tag the name tag is a trademark okay so copyright protect literally the creative aspect of it Okay, there are six categories of copyright. We're going to go through this part later. Geographic indication uh, relates to um, in Bahasa Melayu, uh, petunjuk geography, um, to a product, a certain product, have a certain characteristic that origi have a, originate from a certain area uh, in any part of the world. For example, we have Becha Melaka over here. Uh, we have um, uh, Ikan Terubut Sarawak. Uh, we have uh, Median Sarawak, etc. Okay, layout design of IC. This refer to the three D topography of your IC. So this is uh, this one has no registration. You don't have to submit anything to MyPool to enter protection for this. Okay, what you need to do is to prepare a SD, a Kwa or statutory declaration, declare that you're the owner of this and the originality of this layout design of IC, and that's it. Keep it with you. Okay, you don't have to submit anywhere, no need. And uh, plant variety protection refer to the new plant variety. For example, chrysanthemum, purple color, orchid, rainbow color, or, or so many other things, okay? And trade secret. So today's session, which related to university researcher, all of you here, we're going to specifically discuss what pattern, trademark, industrial design, copyright, and trade secret. Okay, so these five topics will be heavily and uh, thoroughly discussed today. Okay, so the answers to the earlier pop case you will find during the uh, party each uh, respective session. Okay, so who is MIPO? So MIPO is a government agency under Kepulauan P who oversees the uh, the IP, not all IP, eh? um, yeah, pattern, trademark, design, copyright. Um, uh, prosecution here in Malaysia. So if you have uh, intention to have a protection 
uh, for your pattern, your invention here under the patterns law, then you have to submit to the MIPO. So IP law accept, okay, IP law accept copyright and layout design of IC, they are territorial in nature. That means that if you have a protection in Malaysia only, therefore, there's no other protection in overseas. If you have intention to file an overseas country, then we have to go to each and every country of interest. Uh, if you want to have a protection in Thailand, then we need to file in Thailand. But it must originate from Malaysia and then go to the Thailand. Okay. Similarly, if you want to go to the top five countries in the world, which we call IP fine, uh, including US, Europe, Japan, China, and Korea, then you have to basically file in each and every country of this uh, uh, pattern of business. Lah. So all uh, IP of territory in nature. Lah. So that's another question that I will always that we always receive is that so you are you already have a protection here in Malaysia, you file submit in MIPO, and you work under the impression that yeah, also we have a protection in Singapore, in Thailand, etc. So what happened was some infringement or somebody else is copying your product outside Malaysia. We don't go too far, like just in Thailand. And then it, the, the infringement is taking place over there. And then, yeah, but your protection, your protection only here in Malaysia. What can you do? Nothing. You cannot do anything to that person. You cannot take any legal person unless or otherwise their product manufactured in Thailand flew or came in into, the Malaysia, into Malaysia. So when the product enters in Malaysia, only then you can take actions to whoever distributed here in Malaysia to do some enforcement that you are the patent owner for this, you are the trademark owner for this, you are the copyright owner for this, uh, the exclusivity and the industry design, etc. Okay. So I hope this part is clear to uh, all of us here. IP protection, except copyright and layout design rights are territorial in nature. Okay. So a single product can be protected by various form of IP right. Banyak, so many things. You know, sometimes INC RMC also putting one product and then wow, so many, uh, what type of IP that's suitable to protect from this. So to answer that question, we also need to know what are the, the what are your commercialization plan? So if you come up with this invention A, how do you plan to sell this invention? Do you want to sell this as integral part? That can be retrofitted into um, uh, you know, the, the particular bigger inventions, or you want to sell it at its own, whereby it can function at its own independent of any other devices. So that will help us to determine how to go uh, with the IP suitable IP protection and commercialization strategy. So with all this IP bundled together, it helps you protect invention, nurture your brand if you're trademark. Strengthen your competitive edge and expand in market share. All of this theory. Now, kita bagi you example. Okay, so minyak cakapa. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, most of us know about minyak cakapa. The X brand is the uh, origin from Singapore. Okay, we, we have been wondering what type of protection this uh, minyak cakapa are there. But until now, they still can survive. And until now, the product is still there. And until now, very hard to find a similar product that are very close to the therapeutic effect of minyak cakapa. What's in it? Okay, so uh, as from the previous slide, slide I mentioned so many IPs that can be protected uh, for this particular one product. So it can be a pattern, different jadi copyright. It, it may have trade secret. Okay, uh, we, uh, they also have industrial design and trademark. So trademark protect the brand name. So the name tag. So the name tag of this product is X brand. So X brand or Chakapa is a trademark. So if you were to protect this trademark under copyright, unfortunately, you won't be able to enjoy the protection given under the trademark law. Okay. They probably have a trade secret. So trade secret ni is a secret lah. Nobody knows what is what is there. Tada. This trade secret is not available or published in patent document, it's not published in copyright document, it's not even published in industrial design document. Only few people under this X brand uh, know about the information of this trade secret, lah. like Coca-Cola, you know, Google search, etc. So upper patterns here, possibly, okay, they have a pin relief composition 
comprising menthol crystal, camphor, eucalyptus, methyl salicylate. Okay. So with this information, do you think that it's enough for us to manufacture this X brand, uh, this uh, pain relief composition or ointment? No, because the missing link is here. In order for infringer to produce or manufacture this uh, X brand universal oil, or minyak angin cakapa, they basically need to use this pattern and combine with this trade secret. With this combination only, then they can arrive at this invention. Okay, so uh, what are the copyright? Copyright literally works the packaging. You look at the packaging now, the right up, uh, the right up, whatever leaflet uh, that is available in this box, in this container, is protected under copyright. The label here can be protected under copyright. Okay, so if you come up with your own product, we need to know how do you want to commercialize this? What's your intention? Oh, my intention is that I want to have a protection for this product, so I don't want anyone to copy for, for the rest of the lifespan of your product. That means that you want to keep that as a trade secret. Lah. Okay, but some is under requirement. For example, you have a grant or you know, in order for you to convince investor, in order for you to convince licensee, suka atau tidak, you have to at least get a patent okay, to uh, be part of this product. So when you do the licensing agreement, all of these can be licensed out. Okay, whether you want you want to license only the patent part of it, which means that they can pro they can produce the minya angin minya angin, but under the different name. For example, you produce OEM, then you license out only patent. But if your intention is that okay, um, company ABC, yeah, you can take up license from IAUM. Again, we can give you a pattern, but also you must use the brand name that we have developed for this product. So that means that under the licensing agreement, these two, okay, pattern and trademark must be bundled together to preserve the uh, association of IIUM with this product and also uh, to the use of this particular pattern. Okay, my like example, no worry. Okay, uh, yeah, we have this. Um, Oxygenometer, okay. This is very famous, lah. Now because of COVID nineteen, etc. Right. So the use of this, the use of this, this much is known. So it can be, it may be protected under patent, okay. And then now you come up with the improvement to it, and then you use, uh, whether it's wired or wireless. But all we know is that you're going to put, a, you're going to have a GUI graphical user interface using an app. So this app. We have you monitor whatever reading from this uh, oxygenometer. Okay, so this is the pattern part of it, and then uh, the name of the apps. Okay, the name of the entire product can be protected under trademark. Okay, the shape of this uh, oxygenometer, I repeat, the shape of this oxygenometer can be protected under industrial design. Okay, the programming language. The back end of this can be protected under copyright. Okay, what are the patents? This one can be subjected to patent, and also the back end system that processes, uh, if there is any, uh, the algorithm behind the apps. Okay, this is an example from Nanyang Chamber University in Singapore. Okay, so even though they don't have durian, they don't have, but they are the one of the big, one of the. Uh, I would say uh, Duranita in, in the world, you know, Singaporean. So basically, they have many Duran Haas and they, they, they um, process this Duran Haas. Uh, of course, like, they have, you know, they use enzyme, they use uh, delinification, etc. to produce a bandage. Okay. And uh, they also use um, uh, anti order agent to remove the pungent order of this Duran Haas. So uh, this is on the product. Lah. So what are the patterns? The pattern will be the bandage. The pattern also uh, can force on the composition of this bandage. What's in it? Duran has the cellulose, the hemicellulose, the semicellulose, etc. What are the other agents? What are the other uh, agents such as antimicrobials, colorants, stabilizer, buffer, etc. Okay, this is an example. Pharmaceutical composition comprising papa basil for the treatment and remedy of bronchial respiratory difficulty. 
So uh, ini pokok uh, down sirih. So all of these things, uh, this down sirih, you know, the down sirih itself, you cannot have a, you cannot get a pattern for it, that's for sure. But the extract of down sirih, yes, you can. Then the extract of down sirih, um, whatever method that you use, and then you form into a pharmaceutical composition, then it can be protected under the patents law. You should come up with a name of the name for this invention, and the name can be protected under trademark law. And if this is the extract from down siri, and for the fact that, that the extract from down siri is already known, but you find out a secondary or subsequent subsequent medical um uh, subsequent or medical use. Okay. The use of down siri, okay, for example, to treat Alzheimer, you can get a patent for that. Provided that the use of down city for example have not been disclosed as well huh, around the world. But what I'm trying to say is that any secondary or subsequent use of a known pharmaceutical uh, product okay, can be novel and subject to the patent protection under the patent law. I give you an example uh, to be clearer. Eh? Tongkat Ali. So we know that Tongkat Ali uh, is traditionally used also now many manufactured to uh, for treating or for increasing the human at the man testosterone level but okay you found out that okay this tonka ali also can treat um wound a chronic wound for diabetic example uh. so that's another use of known tonka ali so that you the use of tonka ali to treat chronic wound uh, of a diabetic patient can be protected under the patent law Nanti kita akan jumpa that part ni later in the patent, under the patent section. So 3D printing assembly, uh, this one also can be protected under patent law. What what is it? Okay, uh, the gantry the gantry portion over here, how they move up and move down, how you control this thing, and with automatic leveling platform, the platform can go up and down in communication with this gantry machine to produce a 3D article. Okay, and you also can have a pattern protection for the composition of the 3D printing filament. So what type of resin they use, what type of a curing agent they use can be protected under patent law. If you give name to this product, this entire machine, ABC 3D printing, and that ABC 3D printing can be protected under trademark law. In here, okay, this is a pico hydro turbine, okay for uh, use uh, for to generate electricity in rural area. So that means a very simple invention, but the use of this, okay, uh, turbine have used number from Pico. It's a very nominal uh, kilowatts of electricity produced by this uh, turbine. Lah. Okay. This invention, there's so many universities invested, or I would say ventured into this area many, many years ago, but still now they are doing this part. Um, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't elaborate on that part lah, because it involves the commercialization. The commercialization itself is a standalone workshop, so we won't uh, spend time on that part. Lah. Okay, if, unless otherwise you have a question that we're going to explain. Another example, data encryption. So the encryption and decryption, whatever key you use, public key or private key, or maybe a key derived from uh, an image, can also be protected under the patent law. So if you give a name to this data encryption method, then it will be protected under trademark, okay, and so on lah, banyak. So this COVID-19 rapid antigen test kit, and very recently only a company in Penang claimed that they have, uh, they managed to manufacture uh, RTK for COVID-19 test kit. So I'm not sure which, which, which company is that, but just to share with you, the rapid antigen test kit for viral antigen have been there for so so many so many 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 years you know so sejak zaman MERS-CoV, SARS-CoV or we all way back on the coronavirus uh, detection so regardless whether uh, COVID name has been coined or SARS-CoV has been coined but pat there are many patterns for coronavirus uh, detection already in the patent databases so that also gives some difficulty for the local company or maybe for university researcher, maybe IIM researcher to come up with RTK, okay, a rapid antigen test kit for the coronavirus detection. 
because there's so many blockings already in the patent databases. So you invented uh, antigen A, whatever, uh, reagent, whatever buffer, all of them have been anticipated in the patent databases. So with a, with a uh, what I call this minor adjustment or modification, you know, uh, you arrive at invention. So that, uh, uh, this is going to be uh, the patentability matter, the patentability subject matter, where we're going to discuss about that one in depth soon. Huh? Okay. There are all Mukadima, just an intro. Now we get a pretty details on what is trade secret. So trade secret, okay, refer to the information. Okay, so uh, the information, when we talk about trade secret, it refer to the information, yeah? Okay, so the information must be, number one, commercially valuable because it is secret. Okay, number two, must be known only to a limited group of person. Remember the Minya Chekapa? Nobody knows what is in there. And nobody knows uh, what is in the recipe of KFC, etc. To coat the chicken with flour, to produce such KFC fried chicken. Okay, it's very limited. Okay, and be subject to reasonable step. Okay, taken by you, IAUM, to keep it secret. Okay, you have a proper NDA, you have a special container, a bank, a deposit for this document. Nobody knows about it. And they are also possible uh, to commercialize these inventions. Many universities, I would say UPM, uh, and some other universities or UM or RU, I would say they manage to commercialize this trade secret. And how? Uh, that is different subject matter together. And then we have to go in depth to uh, the procedure, and cetera, into the licensing agreement, into uh, a lot of uh, MOU, MOE, to secure this trade secret. Okay, example, the classic one is Coca-Cola. I mentioned nobody know the recipe of Coca-Cola. Okay, elsewhere and everywhere in part of the world, they have a centralized kitchen. I'm not sure how they read. Only a few people know about the invention. And there's a rumors uh, says that only uh, three person know about uh, this invent this uh, formula. In order for this formula to work, you need to combine these two people together. Only then you can get the recipe. Okay, so a portion of um, what they call the recipe uh, uh, lies with one person and another portion with a different person. So WD-40, okay, even though there's a formulation over there, like Mina Chakapa, but remember the same missing link. So that missing link is trade secret. Google, Google search algorithm. Okay. Uh, I think this is why that uh, the term Pachi Google came out because of uh, whatever it is, Google has answer. Whatever question you have, you will ask Google because of the searching algorithm this Google has. Okay, so they give you the best hit ever in the best in the first landing page. So the preference or the relevancy is that you have no doubt. And then I think I, I would like to dare you challenge you to compare the search result from Google to Yahoo or any other search engine, and you will feel and you will see the difference because of uh, the Google search algorithm. There's no pattern to protect the Google search algorithm, but it is a trade secret. Listerine, okay, Listerine uh, composition, okay. Listerine, I think one of the pioneer of the trade secret in the world, uh, the very, very first trade, uh, Listerine, okay. The common issue with trade secret is that you need to prepare all these documents, you know, so the non-disclosure document, NDA, non-compete agreements, okay, infringement, enforcement, all of this must be in place. So if someone copy your trade secret or enforce your trade, trade, trade secret, uh, the enforcement will be on the misappropriation. You need to prove that that person or that fella, okay, truly uh, you put your trade secret, and then you must show the proof that this person linked to the trade secret. If that person is independently, okay, came up with a secret, okay, and then you, you build up no case against him or her, okay. So, uh, yeah, it is harder to keep the information secret. Okay, it's very, it, it's tough, lah, I would say. For example, at uh, INC, RMC, okay, and then you have people uh, uh, come in and out, and then you need to preserve the secrecy of the invent of the information, and you need to have a proper uh, uh, SOP, a proper documentation to keep, 
to make sure that the trade secret remain secret. Okay, bila dah bertukar tangan from one person to another, and then there you go. So this person with another person, and another person with another person. Most importantly is that how you want to secure the information from leaking out on the uh, licensee or industry side. So I understand that we are all enthusiastic. We are all enthusiastic, you know, to share our information with outsiders, especially for commercialization. Kita can share everything. We will share, okay, this product here, here, your product can do and so and so. If, if, if the participants or the business uh, during the pitching session, they provoke you with one question, and then you just, you have a tendency, you're inclined to share more and more and more. So the more you share, the more you reveal, and the more you reveal, uh, the fragile will be the trade secret. Lah. So we need to know lah. So what type of protection that you are relying on for your invention for your product. So there's no registration for trade secret. Again, uh, there's no registration for trade secret. So you just keep internal documentation, okay, within uh, your premise. In this case, INC or MC. Lah. If you're an inventor, remember you have a penyelidik, you, date, you have a duty to disclose to the university, whatever, the finding or discovery that you have. Okay, so that's all about the trade secret. Copyright. Okay, so copyright uh, refer to um, the rights, you know, the creator, the author have over the literary and artistic work. Okay, literary and artistic work. There's no invention here. But the support from pasal invention under copyright. Huh? Okay. That are essentially expression of creative ownership. Okay, you need definition copyright. So if you want to have a protection of copyright, this is the definition you need to fulfill. If your your product have technical features, involve technical parts, I don't think so. Copyright is a suitable uh, protection for invention. Okay, okay. Works covered by copyright include books. Okay, music. Painting, sculpture, film, computer program, databases, technical drawing, maps, advertisement, all of this. Tak ada invention dalam ni. Okay. Books, okay, the scopus, IEEE, uh, medical journal, your thesis, your master's thesis, your PhD thesis, they are all can be protected under copyright law. Okay, the recording of Upin and Ipin can be protected under copyright law. But the name Upin and Ipin, remember the name tag, this is a trademark. Okay, the source code, sculpture. Okay, if you're talking about this sculpture, you can protect under copyright. But if you, you're talking about a method, how to pull up all the metal article to form a, a sculpture, then that is patent. Okay, so there are a few parts, a very fine line between how to get protection for a sculpture. You cannot get better protection for sculpture in terms of method of constructing this sculpture. Okay, or an adhesive. Okay, you, you don't use any um, screw bowl or not, but you use a special adhesive to bind all these metal articles together. And this adhesive is under the patent law. Okay, the drawing of bangunan, uh, the building, okay, the architect, arch, sorry, architecture of the building sir, also can be protected under the copyright law. Okay, so. Just, uh, during the pop quiz, I mentioned that you have not necessarily you must file your protection at my pool, right? So this is where, okay, the protection you have under the copyright law is automatic, okay? So that means that uh, you will enjoy the protection of your copyright upon creation of your invention, okay? So you create and you express your work in a tangible form so that it can be heard and it can be seen. Barulah you boleh dapat enjoy the product protection. But if it is still in your mind, it has not been reduced to any tangible form, then you will not get any copyright protection. Okay, There's no need to file registration to get protection copyright. This is under Burn Convention. Okay, So Burn Convention, Malaysia is one of the signatory for this Burn Convention. Lah. So the reason why you submitted to the MIPO, number one, maybe number one, you need to fulfill the section A of MIRA, okay? You need to get some point for MIRA, therefore you have to submit to the MIPO, okay? And also, the reason why you submit to formalize, formalize the ownership, 
to formalize the originality of your work. Uh, okay, we come to that part later. Overseas protection is automatic too. Okay, that means that I remember I mentioned about Bern Convention. Okay, copyright work created by a Malaysian citizen or resident is protected in many countries overseas. Okay, if you have uh, basically, uh, for example, uh, there's an infringement of your book in Singapore or infringement of your journal or article or your paper in Singapore, okay, you can take action at, to, uh, against that person in Singapore. But first, okay, their procedure need to be done. Lah. Number one, you have to submit at IPOS, IP Office of Singapore. Once it's submitted, only then you can initiate any legal action. Lah. Uh, that's how it works, you know, because you need to establish your rights over there first before you can take any legal action under the Singapore law. Uh, if you're talking about Malaysia, you don't have the protection of Malaysia, you submitted already at MIPO, uh, maybe uh, you haven't submitted the MIPO, or if you want to enforce your right, you can immediately do that. Uh, but this is different from other countries in terms of enforcement. What else? The symbol C. So the symbol C over here is a notice of claim by IIUM that the copyright hello exists in that product. For example, you look at the bottom of the screen, we have a copyright notice over here that the slide over here is belong, uh, belongs to Patterns with International Sermon and no one can copy, etc. etc. If you can recall the very first slide, the very first two slides of our uh, presentation today, there's a copyright notice. Uh, okay, so if you have a lecture note, if you wrote, if you wrote a book, or if you come up with a drawing, if you come up with a photo, then you can use this symbol C. Okay, how to use it? Okay, uh, this is how we usually put it. Lah. Symbol C followed by year and followed by the owner of that particular article. And then followed by all right reserve or private use only. Lah. If you, if you allow uh, any person to use your article for private use, your paper for private use, but it's difficult uh, for you to control. Uh. What we suggest is that, just put all right this stuff. Uh. So everything you want to do with this, you need to ask this person. So this person owns this copyright. Okay, you want to copy, you want to uh, reproduce in any form, in pendrive, in CD, you want to scan, uh, you want to uh, you know, get a copy of that particular book, you need to get a concern from the owner. It is how you copy that buggy to you. Okay. For example, this is your paper, and your published paper describes a lot of things about uh, uh, um, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical composition, right? pharmaceutical composition of A, B, C, and D. So that pharmaceutical composition is, is, uh, is your uh, invention that you made, but you publish in paper. If you submit this invention under the copyright law, what the reputation you will get? you only able to control the reproduction of this document. You have no right on the underlying ideas there, which is the pharmaceutical composition. If you want to protect this pharmaceutical composition that appear or written in this particular paper, you must file a patent protection for this. Okay? So there are two different protections together. So copyright gives you a uh, the rights to control reproduction subject of this document. Now, for the state, not scan is all uh, the copyright gift to you, but not, not, and it does not extend to the underlying ideas. Okay. Works eligible for copyright, there are six. Okay. Uh, literary work, musical work, artistic work, film, sound recordings, and broadcasts. If you see any part of the young other invention, and then you let me know. Unfortunately, no. Invention, we have technical effect, does not fall in any of this category. So if you have an invention, for example, you wrote in a paper or uh, in an article journal, and this article journal falls under literary work, and therefore you can fall under copyright, but only for this paper, lah, this paper, you know, the tangible form, the paper. But if your intention is about the idea inside this, the underlying idea, then you have to go on a pattern. Or, or different uh, IP domain, lah. pattern, ID, or trademark. Okay, different. 
protection ni sampai situ saja. I hope that you understand uh, this part of the difference between copyright and patent. Okay, what is literary works? Okay, literary cover, novel, story. Okay, manuscript. Uh, if talking about the the paper tadi, the article journal, triple E, etc. Manuscript. Uh, other writings. Uh, okay, table compilation and computer program. This is definition given by the law, you know. So that means that color your invention, your your product does not fall within this definition. That means that it does not fall under literary work lah. So you have to go to another category. Is it a musical work? Uh, no lah, it's not musical work. There's no uh, no score, music music score, etc. Is it fall under artistic work? So artistic work cover graphic work. Okay, photograph, sculpture, collage. Okay. A work of architecture and artistic craftsmanship. Artistic, ah, the keyword is artistic. So that means that, oh yeah, our invention tak jatuh lah dalam ini of this. So what protection that we already file a copyright. So protect, remember, give protection only for a piece of tangible form like this. Ah, uh, the one that you submit pun you submit in this form. Okay, there's no claim dalam tu. There's no ah. Uh, you you describe the nature of the invention, the methodology, etc. But all of these things cannot be protected under copyright. You know, if you want to enforce, hey, you no, know, you copy my copyright. Uh, you copy my invention. My invention you spell out in the in the copyright document, etc. And the person say no, you only. The argument is that, uh, if you have only copyright, okay. You can only enjoy the protection to control the production of this document. Okay, I did not uh, as infringer lah. I check up. I did not. I did not copy. I did not produce. I did not uh, scan. I did not copy. I not keep any copy of this thing. So I just use the idea. The idea here doesn't fall under your copyright rights. It's under patents law. Unless otherwise you have patent only that you can talk to me. Otherwise, I'm free to produce or manufacture this product. And there are many case law about all this thing, like the confusions, you know, especially between uh, Silverstone and uh, Goodyear Tire. Okay, I don't have time to describe all these things, uh, but later, uh, later, if you question, I will explain. Okay, uh, film, sound recording, and broadcast, and I can explain this is uh, not, not so relevant to your field, uh, but you're going to get a copy of this slide later on that you can uh, go through uh, at your end uh, later. So, the requirement for copyright number one, the work must be original. Okay, remember it must be reduced to uh, tangible form, meaning that it has to be written down, recorded, or reduced to any material form. Lah. It must satisfy the requirement, all of these things, and must fall, okay, work must fall within one of the category. There are six categories, remember the literary work, artistic work, musical, etc. Okay. If you file a trademark for this, if you file a trademark under the copyright law, what you get is that, I give you an example. So if this is your submission, and then uh, this is your logo, okay, you submit to um, um, my pool, okay, under the copyright law. So what the protection you end up with here is the reproduction of this, but you cannot stop people from using your logo, because a uh, copyright law does not extend to the underlying ideas. If you want to protect this logo, you have to go to uh, uh, the trademark law, lah. Okay, there are different way of uh, uh, interpreting uh, the invention lah. The how what is suitable protection etc. So the originality of copyright work is independent. It's a refer to a degree of independent effort. Uh, okay, it's not a question whether the work has merit or not. Even you submit uh, your copyright and my poll, there is no examination will take place because. Uh, under the Bern Convention, it just refer to artistic or expression of idea, but not to the underlying idea. So there's no no point for them to check the details of the information unless otherwise you related to the formality requirement. For example, the name of owner, IC, entity, etc. The author, etc. But the detail of it, the underlying ideas, they will not subject to examination because of it refer only to the expression of idea. The detail of it, you need to go to a different IP domain, pattern, trim up. Pattern trademark or industry design, etc. Okay. The proof originality, uh, yang ni, this is where lah you submit the copyright to uh, Maipo. 
traditionally, you can just uh, put your work, you written down in an envelope, and then you mail it to yourself, and then open it, and it is admissible uh, 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 to the court. Lah. But the question is that over the time, it becomes yellowish and maybe, maybe lost in transit, etc. Okay. Uh, the second is the second uh, way of doing this is that make a statutory declaration, SD lah, before commissioner for hold. Or okay, you deposit your work at my pool. So the deposition of work at my pool is voluntary. Kalau you perasan at the form, the bagi tahu voluntary or sukarela. Okay, so that's why lah the term sukarela ni ada. That means that you sukarela nya or voluntarily submit or deposit your work to record the work at my po copyright register. Uh, okay. Okay, this is copyright clearance process. I think I'm going to skip this. Okay, uh, this is where basically if you jumpa satu gambar and then whether or not you're going to use it or how to use it, this is the, the flow chart lah. You can flow, follow, follow later. Okay, kita tengok the copyright around us. We have Scopus, Spotify, uh, uh, TV drama, uh, Mami Hana, my first book. Mami Hana here is a trademark. So therefore, you need to file a trademark for this. But if you're talking about the book that are uh, created by Mami Hana publisher, then you have to go under copyright. If this invention have audio or it has augmented reality, Okay, can use your smartphone and your kids can use your camera and see how the 3D build up of the certain character from the book. Therefore, that has a technical part of it and it must be protected under pattern. Uh, so, the book is so many things. Even this device itself, the device with, uh, um, sorry, uh, the device with audio, the device with all these buttons, uh, they prob probably have a controller, Arduino, and a back microcontroller, and then etc. Cetera, et cetera. So many things. If you were to uh, uh, do some surgery or operate, buka or decompose, and then you see a lot of invention uh, in there. Maybe they are not aware of, oh, yeah, they can protect this under patents law, or maybe they have a fiscal concern, budget is a concern. The moment we go for the trademark only, la, that's why it's cheaper than patent. Patent is too expensive. But remember, the protection you get is very, way much different than the trademark give you, than the copyright give you. Okay, IIUM website, yeah, this one is uh, automatically protected under copyright. Tak pun, INC or MC did not submit any copyright submission form for to enjoy the protection for this. Because remember, it's automatic. You don't have to submit whatever website you produce. If you scroll down, and then you will see a copyright notice. All right, reserve uh, IIUM 2022. Okay, Netflix, etc. Okay, so now we have covered trade secret and copyright. So we're going to go very quickly for um, uh, industry design before we take a break at 10 30. Yeah? Okay, if you have any questions, you can let me know. Uh, you just interject the session or you can uh, put your question in the chat box and I will pick up the question from time to time. Lah. Okay, so um, trade secret is a secret. Lah. No, nothing that you can, uh, nobody know, not many people know about the secret. Copyright is the expression of all literary works, expression of authorship. Okay, industrial design is the baju that you put on your product. It's a baju that you put on a product that can be seen by your naked eye. Uh, so whatever you can see, for example, dalam product ni sekarang, that can be protected under industry design and only that. Okay, I give example. Okay, so industrial design, okay, refer to the ornamental or aesthetic, aesthetic aspect of an article. You see, ah, di tak masih lagi we tak jumpa the keywords of technical, the keyword for the invention. Okay, industrial design, even though the name industrial. But it refers to ornamental and aesthetic. Okay, ornamental and aesthetic. Okay, yeah, it, it can have a 3D features. Okay, and it can have a 2D features. What is, what is 3D? What is 
2D example. Okay. This is a fork and spoon lah, a set of calories kan. So the shape of this a particular um, fork and spoon, because of its ornamental and aesthetic in nature, they can be protected under industrial design. Okay. Whatever you can see by naked eye now. Okay. But if you're talking about the composition of this plastic, the plastic component, the biodegradable natural plastic composition of this uh, fork and spoon, okay, that comprises polymer A, polymer B, colorant A, antimicrobial agent A, C, D, E. It has to be protected under patent. Ini lah, I tanya how you want to commercialize of this thing. If you just want to sell this, you want to manufacture and just sell this, and therefore the industry design is sufficient. Lah. But if you want to license this out to a third party to help you produce, which usually the case of university, then you need a patent to protect the composition of this. This composition can protect uh, the calories in this shape or in any other shapes. Industrial design only protect this particular shape now. Yeah, kita nampak this way. Okay, Tudung Siti Kareja. Siti Kareja here is a trademark. Okay, don't be confused again. Huh? Okay, so the shape of this telekong, the lace, okay, the arrangement of lace over here, okay, is protected under industrial design. In fact, it is it is a protection, it's a protected under industrial design. Lah. They have filed a few ID for Tudung telekong. Uh, same goes to Farida, same goes to uh, other uh, hijabi, hijab uh, company. Lah. They produce. They produce a scarf, head scarf, and then they protect under industrial design. Whatever need they give, they protect under trademark law. Lah. Okay. So the definition of industrial design. Okay. Tadi ornamental and aesthetic, right? So now we have shape, configuration, pattern, or ornament. Okay. Example, uh, the article of which that is appeal to the eye and are judged by the eye. Okay, so your eye cannot tell what composition you need. Your eye only can tell the shape of the uh, baju, the baju that you pakaikan kepada uh, that particular product. For example, helmet. Okay, so this GB helmet over here, the shape of this GB helmet can be protected under industrial design. Okay, but if you're talking about the composition of this acrylic, okay, the composition na na na. This one have to go under pattern. The name GV is a trademark. Okay. Mouse, bendable mouse. The shape of the mouse like this is ornamental. So it can be subjected to industrial design protection. But if you are concerned about a flexible substrate, a flexible substrate, okay, that form this mouse. Therefore, you have to go under the pattern. The name you bagi kepada this mouse, that is trademark. Okay, I think it's, it's, I hope it's very clear lah to you. Another example, which is the shape of the chair. If you look at your chair now, the shape of the chair, all of them can be protected under industrial design. Okay, so uh, it refers to manufacture or handicraft. Okay includes any part of, her, of such article or handicraft. Macam ni lah, kita jumpa contoh. Kita bagi you example lagi ya. Eh? If you want to see, later we give a few more example. Not everything under the sun can be registered under industrial design. So section 3 highlights the non-registrable industrial design. Include a method or principle of construction. Uh, this one covered already in pattern. Okay, Features will depend upon the appearance of another article. For example, uh, Proton come up with a uh, headlight for the new car and they want to have a protection for this headlight. So this headlight alone cannot be protected under industrial design because the shape of this headlight depends upon the, the body of the car. Okay, cannot. The features of tickets detected solely by function. This is also cannot. Yeah, the, um, this is example. The shape of X50 or X70 car by Proton. This shape of this car here, this shape, the body of the car can be protected under industrial design. Okay, but if you're talking about the engine, 
capacity, the internal combustion engine, or if you're talking about the brake system, or if you're talking about uh, entertainment unit, okay, or if you're talking about uh, the, uh, the dashboard composition, all of them, you can offer pattern. Okay, because industrial design that can protect that part. We will not go to the extent. Okay, the requirement for IT is that it must be new. That means that the design was not disclosed to the public anywhere in Malaysia or in other country. So this is the requirement for industrial design. Lah. So it must be new. Okay, and uh, there's, there's also a grace period for uh, industrial design. Dalam masa 6 bulan preceding the final date, you must file the design if you have intention to have it protected here in Malaysia. Okay, for example, you, you're going to join MTE later. Okay, this MTE are uh, somewhere in March or April. And between March, you have six months from April 2020 to file industrial design for that particular uh, invention. If not, the novelty will be destroyed. Okay. So this section 19 highlights the right of the owner, U, I, I, U, M, okay, to make, to import, to use, to sell, to hire, or to offer, to export. So any article to which the registered design has been applied. Okay, the keyword there registered. This is where how you license, you do the licensing. Right? So uh, when you draft an agreement, licensing agreement, you must always remember if you have a pagawa, undang-undang of your legal officer, you must you must always refer to this section. These are the rights that you can confer or you can bestow or you can give to the licensee, not other than this. Okay, sometimes when we write through the agreements, it extends beyond this. So you must carefully, okay, uh, draft your agreement within this um, circle. Okay, example. This is line corporation. They come up with this uh, anak patung, etc. And this anak patung is basically can be protected under <clears throat> industrial design. There are class, there are a number of classes right, for uh, local new classes for industrial design. Okay, now let's take a look uh, for example of industrial design around us. Okay, uh, switch, the wall switch. This is uh, Protectable under industrial design. The tapware, okay. So the tapware is indeed protected here in Malaysia, in, in also some other country. And uh, every container and every shape of this tapware product is what are protected. Huh? Uh, the housing for the LPG cylinder, okay. The lightweight LCD, um, the lightweight um, gas cylinder. Okay, the shape of this billboard, okay, that belongs to Big Tree. Okay, uh, the face shield, okay, you have, if you have a different type of face shield or different ornaments or different design, you can protect under the industry design law. The handbag, Jimmy Choo handbag, and uh, this is the uh, sanitizer, the, um, the dispenser, the, the producer smoke, et cetera. The, okay, so, when you think on the screen now, they are protectable and that's industrial design. Okay, remember there's nothing, uh, there's no technical uh, aspect or technical uh, features can be protected in industrial design. So you have to know which part you are protectable under industrial design, which part is protectable under copyright, which part is protectable under pattern. Okay, so we have covered, okay, trade secret, copyright, industry, and industrial design. Now, um, it's already ten thirty. As I promise you, then we're going to have a ten minute, uh, ten minute break. Okay, before uh, we continue with uh, trademark. So after trademark, we're going to have a pattern, and we're going to also have uh, some uh, case study lah. If 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 I have time, okay. In the meantime, kalau ada soalan, you can uh, let me know, and then we come back in lima uh, belas minit dari pada sekarang. You can take coffee, you can drink coffee if you want. And again, I want to share with you that we have two sessions today. So the first session will be this session, the current session, which is the lecture. And the second session will be uh, a one-to-one -one IP clinic. So that our one-to-one -one IP clinic um, is exclusive discussion 
between um, representative from practitioner, which is from us, Titans Worth, representative from uh, RMC, uh, Dr. Farah and uh, her team, and also representative from your team. You can discuss uh, any issues related to your invention, related to the commercialization, or related to uh, any um, collaborations or, or real, uh, collaborations or cooperation with any, any third party, like for example, industry. Okay. Are you all anchor from uh, the floor? If you have a question, if you have any questions, you, you can just uh, uh, unmute and ask any questions. So at the moment, orang semua dah keluar, so we are going somewhere else to take up some of the drinks, and then yeah, you can ask questions if you have.
Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi So we are come back to our participants. So we're going to continue in uh, less than two minutes. So while um, now people are coming up and uh, warming up a bit. And to those who just came in, welcome. Welcome to the uh, session. So we basically have covered uh, trade secret, um, copyright, industrial design, and now we're going to go to trademark. Okay, so I met, as I shared with you early on, trademark is it's a brand name, you know? It's a, it's a name tag. It's a name, name tag that you give uh, to your product and you want to call your product A, B, C, D, E, F, for example. So this product bears a name and this name is uh, something that uh, you, it's a, usually it's something catchy. Look. For example, uh, I, I, U, M, this is something catchy or U, I, A, M, this is something catchy or, or for example here, patterns worth is something catchy. Uh, we have, co for example, Coca-Cola, what else? Uh, Mary Brown, okay. They are all a sign, okay, that is capable of distinguishing the goods, the barang-barang or services, perkhidmatan, from one enterprise from those of other enterprises. So the reason being you follow Chigma, other than of course for your session in my heart, is that for you to able to distinguish, okay, one entity to another in the course of trade. So for example, IIUM, the abbreviation of IUM is different than UM, from the USM, etc. So that the reason why we have this abbreviation, we have this abbreviation is to make sure that we are able to distinguish from one another. And remember the color, the turquoise color uh, unique to IIUM, that also can be protected under trademark. Interesting, right? Okay, so this is, uh, imagine these two shoes over here, and then we have uh, uh, two, similar shoes and then we have a three stripe over here and we can straight we tell that oh this one belongs to adidas regardless how many stripes they uh, are they are there but we can tell that this is a, uh, a adidas shoes unlike this one we couldn't tell uh, which brand it is we need to flip around and see uh, the insole or maybe uh, the uh, at the back to see whether or not it bears any trademark or any sign that indicates the manufacturer. Similarly, if you were to extend this thing, so this the use of the Nike uh, sign over here and the use of this Adidas indicate that this one from Adidas and this one from Nike. There are two different, um, what they call this, uh, sign altogether lah, that can be used over here. All right, so um, even though the shoes are more or less the same, okay, kalau your intention is about the fabric of the shoes, and then they for uh, you are muted. Can you? Switch on your mic. Sorry. So this is um. So sorry. Thank you for informing me. So uh, the type of fabric that you concerned about can be protected under the patent law. So for example, the the fabric uh patented by Uniqlo, they have intertwined a uh, number of fabric that intertwine together that can give opacity as well as ventilation. So that this product they call Arism, okay? So this Arism is a trademark, belongs to Uniqlo, but the fabric over here is patented, okay? So uh, we will come to the pattern section later on. Huh? So we now add the trademark section. Okay, definition of trademark is given by section three of the new uh, trademark law 2019, okay? So it is a sign capable of being represented graphically, okay? And also capable of distinguishing goods or services from one to another, okay? There are many types of trademark, okay? This is uh, a, uh, 
this is a certification mark. These two are certification mark. Standard Malaysia and Halal is a certification mark. This is also a certification mark. And uh, this is association mark, collective mark. And we also have a normal mark. Meaning that just a normal logo used for normal, ordinary use, not for certification. In order for you to use this, for example, Standard Malaysia or, or Halal by Jakim, you need to go through a certification uh, program or examination scheme in order for you to qualify to use this kind of uh, trademark for that particular product. So any abuse of, uh, for example, any illegal use of this logo, okay, is an infringement under trademark law, beside whatever infringement to uh, under the particular uh, acts or regulation. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned just now, the color of the turquoise color of IAUM can also be registered under trademark. This is because the definition of sign okay, has been expanded, has been extended beyond the traditional definition. So this is the traditional uh, definition of trademark of a sign. Okay, letter, word, name, signature is traditional mark. But now Malaysian trademark law has extended to this non-traditional mark. So the non-traditional mark include the shape of goods or the packaging, color, okay, sound, scent, hologram, positioning, and sequence of motion. Example, okay, if you were to look at, if you can look at your keyboard now, okay, so this is a positioning mark. So this keyboard contains these tiny little features over here. Okay, we call it a positioning mark. So this positioning mark indicates that okay, this keyboard is produced by that particular manufacturer. Okay, example. Okay, this is a Lenovo keyboard. Okay, we used to see this particular toggle or button over here. Okay, it served no function at in at uh, at the beginning, but now perhaps they have enhanced it to um, maybe a cursor or maybe a touchpad, something like that. Okay, so this is a positioning mark. Okay, the position, the positioning of this red button over here indicate that this keyboard belongs to Lenovo. If you can see on the screen, the keyboard bears no no trademark of Lenovo, but instead they represent the brand using this particular positioning. Another example is a color mark. This is Australian trademark registration. Okay, uh, this particular color of yellow, green and red. Okay, this belongs to 7-Eleven. So the use of this color is exclusive only for 7-Eleven. Okay, um, KK mark. Uh, 99 speed mark, they cannot use this combination of color. Okay, whatever color need to be defined by Pantone. Okay, or you can let us, uh, you can define by CMYK or GB color like, through this Pantone selection chart, color chart. Okay. Another example, uh, this refer to the sound mark, the lion roar. Okay. Under a uh, file by Metro Golden Mayor, okay. Um, like the thousand yelling, okay. The thousand yelling is also is a registered sound mark, okay. Another example is joy sequence of motion mark, okay. This is a sequence of motion to depict that, okay. The use of one drop of joy dishwashing liquid, okay, from one plate, okay, from the first plate to the second plate, third and fourth plate. This is the sequence of motion. Okay, it is a registered sequence of motion mark under a uh, by joy. Okay, if you want to come up with a uh, other dishwashing liquid like um, sun, um, joy or any other dishwashing liquid. Eh? So they cannot follow this code of motion to um, in, a, in, in, in a advertisement or maybe in any, any part of because this particular sequence of motion has been protected by joy under the trademark law. 
Okay, so the right of registered proprietor of trademark is to use the trademark and to authorize other person to use the trademark. This is the licensing now. So you're going to license out your invention that bear this, this uh, mark. Therefore, you need to go under section 48. I'll give you an example. So if this is your product, okay, you enjoy your product and then your product bears a number, for example, uh, CDE. Okay, so uh, this product must still be the bar pattern, okay, because it has technical aspect. So this particular name must be registered under trademark, okay. The shape of this box, for example, can be protected under ID. So, like example that I shared with you earlier on, if you want to license this out, okay, which part of it you want to you want the licensee to use that you allow the licensee to use okay whether it's this pattern trademark or id or you want to combine all of them together that's also possible therefore the value of licensing is going up uh, so jangan tanya kenapa mahal because etc etc et because the more assets in it the more asset in the license agreement the 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 the, the, the more will be the royalty the licensing uh upfront fee etc okay what are the differences between unregistered mark and registered trademark? In Malaysia, there's a protection for unregistered mark. You know, you have to know this thing too. Okay, not necessary. You have to register your trademark in MIPO. Only then you can enjoy the protection of your mark. Okay, as long as you have created a logo and you use in a good uh, will, and not in bad faith, therefore you can enjoy protection under uh, for the unregistered trademark. This particular protection given by the law of thought, okay, okay, under the passing off, passing off law. If you register your trademark, then you can enforce your trademark under trademark law. Lah. Okay, so that the these are the one of the differences. Lah. So the use of superscript TM. And the use of superscript R in circle depends on uh, the registration status of your trademark. If you just file and then it's still pending at my pool, for example, and then you can use this TM, superscript TM on the right corner. You look at our logo over here. Okay, we have a superscript TM. Okay. If the logo has been successfully registered, and then you can use this R in circle. Uh, so in other way, the use of R in circle here, a superscript, means that don't mess with me lah. Uh, so the logo has been registered. If you want to use it, and you have to get a consent from us or pay some royalty, uh, get a license from us, and only then we can uh, allow you to use it lah. Uh, okay. So um, do you the use of trademark uh, TM and R in circle must be uh, must be made properly depending on the registration status as mentioned just now. Okay, so there are 45 classes of trademark. Okay, 45 classes of trademark. If you have uh, your invention, which is for example, related to uh, wound bandage or something related to medical apparatuses, then you need to file the trademark in this particular class. Okay, so class one, up to class 34 are related to the goods, the barang barang. From the class 35 until 45, okay, this one related to the services. Okay, so um, IIUM, IIUM logo can be registered under class 41, education services. Okay. So uh, it depends on the nature of your product, lah, basically, if you want to full, uh, file a trademark. If it is a coffee, and then uh, then we need to look for the classes for that particular coffee. If it's, for example, Arism just now, I mentioned, this is a fabric, then Arism okay, uh, can, file, can be filed under class 24 and class 25. Clothing and footwear, as well as fabric. Uh, okay. What else? Habit jewels. Uh, Masa Anwar, okay, they need to file the name of the shop, the name of the jewelry shop under class 14 because they're selling this. Okay, 
what else? The building material, cosmetic, etc., industrial oil, medicine, they have they are all different classes. But to find which classes you need to get a proper advanced. Okay, sometimes one trademark can fall within, can fall into one or more classes. Uh, so Sebagai contoh, you have a trademark CDE, okay, and then net jet to file, you have not filed this trademark yet, then use a specific PM. And then, yeah, this CDE can be filed in class one, and also can be filed in class, uh, the, sorry, class 29. So they, we can have multiple, multi-class applic trademark application in Malaysia. Okay. So trademark is very straightforward, it's just a brand name. So banyak lagi discussion about the trademark if I were to discuss with you, but it's not so relevant at the moment because all of them involve very legal definition of it and then uh, involve um, thorough definition, uh, thorough discussion about uh, trademark. Let me give an example. Uh. Otherwise, it will be... Uh, uh, okay, this is the registrability of trademark section 24 and then you need to know the earlier trademark. You also... The uh, trademark also protect early unregistered trademark. Uh, so there's so many things you need to know about this thing. But I want to focus more on the patent side. Lah. So uh, we will go very quickly um, about trademark before we jump straight away into patent, which is, I think, more related to you. I think the topic that you're waiting for. Lah. Okay. So trademark or runners, the chicken rice shop, IEM, Merck, Panaflex, Okay, Novozyme, uh, Science Direct. Okay, this Science Direct or with the name Science Direct, this is what we call uh, under the trademark. Lah. But the paper that published under Science Direct is copyright. Okay, the underlying ideas in that paper is patent. Or you have IG. Okay, Novozyme, the name Novozyme is a registered trademark. Lah. But the, the effective microorganism, EM, okay, EM here is patented technology. It falls under patent. Okay, if you have a Shirota, for example, uh, Yakut, Shirota strain, that Shirota strain is patentable. Okay, Penaflag, named Penaflag, is a trademark, registered trademark. But the composition of active ingredient, okay, in this panoply, okay, plus the hydrogel that they use to control the release of the drug, okay, slow release or fast release of the drug within particular uh, period of time. This one is subject to patent, not under trademark, okay. IAUM, okay, this is a, a can be registered under trademark too, Chatan, IAM, etc. Okay. So now, kita dah cover trade secret, okay, copyright, industry design, and trademark. Okay, so very quick, quick recap, huh? okay, trade secret, refer to the information that you want to keep as trade secret. Copyright, refer to the expression of ideas. And remember, copyright does not, pro does not copyright protection does not extend to the underlying idea you express in the copyright document. Industrial design, the baju, the, the, the design that you can see, uh, that see by naked eye and charge and appeal to the eye. Okay, into industrial design. Trademark is a name tag you put on it. Okay, whatever name that you put on there, okay, we be as uh, we become a brand name. Lah. Bila jadi brand name, and then you can file, uh, you can protect it under trademark law, or maybe you don't want to protect it. Also can. There's a special law for unregistered trademark, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, now, kita pergi kepada the, one of the superstar of the day, lah, pattern. Okay, I think many of you involved in the pattern, so we're going to focus more on the pattern. So what is pattern? Okay, it is an exclusive right for invention. Out of so many IP domain just now, this is the only place, this is the only section, this is the only time we we jump the term invention. Okay, when we did not find the term invention in copyright, in trade secret, in trademark, in industry design. 
it only appear here under pattern. Okay, so patents law provide the patent owner, RIUM, the right to decide how or whether the invention can be used by others. Licensing, now, this is the commercialization part of it. Okay, in exchange for this, the patent owner through the inventor must make the technical information about the invention publicly available in the published patent document. Not in your Scopus paper, not in your index journal, not elsewhere, but in a patent document. So this is where we, we wish to emphasize the sufficiency of your uh, data, the sufficiency of your information that you wish to protect under the patents law. So this is the requirement. So the reason why many patent agents, or for example, many patent counsel ask for the information for you is for us to comply with this law. Okay, remember, a failure to provide uh, sufficient data to your patent document can lead to the ground of invalidation. So somebody, the agri party, can invalidate your patent because of insufficient information in your patent document. It can be done and, and it happens. Okay, somebody challenge the, the uh, completeness or the sufficiency, the specificity of the patent document. They say that, no, with this information, I cannot redo this. Um, I cannot replicate this invention. Therefore, it is insufficient. So when it is sufficient, cannot render a person skill in the art to replicate invention. Therefore, it, is, it, it can be invalidated. Okay, example, uh, this is waste to wealth technology. A famous few years ago, I think it's still famous until now, lah, whereby you use the cooking oil and you produce biodiesel. Okay, uh, over here. Okay, so a very simple invention, okay, from the cooking oil, okay, uh, you filter and you skim out so that you can use only the oil. You subject to methoxide catalyst and then you get a byproduct and then you wash and you produce the biodiesel. So this is this what we want to say that it, it has it, this invention has a technical character, involve technical elements and parts, also give a technical effect. Okay, but from IIUM, takkanlah invention macam ni saja kan? So it has to be something that is more intellectual, is more critical, more representative of our IIUM technology. It cannot be too simple like this. So if it is too simple like this, and it's also diff it makes your life difficult to commercialize it. And it will uh will be it will it will you know, we will left in the room as white elephants cannot be uh, commercialized. Here we also will to emphasize on below you go for the commercialization, you also need to think about how to commercialize this. So um the Uru or the culture now is no longer the traditional Ponyalide or traditional inventor. So meaning to say that you know, as an as a intellect, intellectual uh, inventor, okay, apart from the invention, the technical aspect of it, we also need to think about the commercial aspect of it. So you produce one technology, who's going to buy this? You produce the technology, how do you want to sell this? You produce the technology, which industry requires this? You need to have that basic idea at the very beginning of your research journey. Only then, okay, throughout the road, at the end of the research, uh, uh, at the end of the research, you can easily point out, okay, we have engaged in this industry before. They gave us the letter of intention, they signed a MOU, they would like to take up this technology, etc. That, okay, um, make it more meaningful. Uh. Daripada, no, you have the technology, but difficult to commercialize. But I don't say that, uh, you know, the one that below the commercialized can is not good. No, there's no blanket definition, or blanket opinion on that, uh, on that part now. Just because the time has not yet come, or maybe we have not fully uh, pushed the product yet into the market, or perhaps nobody knows that IIUM have this kind of technology. Also possible, you know, nobody knows. The industry is looking for that particular technology, ended up they have to do their own R&D and then they file their own patent. 
while at the very the very first place i i u n are the technology so you must bring this technology a repertoire or portfolio of technology into the public let them know that hey we have this and this and this of course we participated in mte itex sif korea okay and so on but they are still mingling within the same circle you know so the industry they won't come to si to see for to itex just to see uh to find a technology provider you know you have to go actively approach them only then you get uh, whatever the, you read what you saw like you get what you want uh, you want the industry to take up with technology yes you can do uh, the consultancy you can help them with this and this and this okay so under the uh, patents act okay by the way we have a new patents amendment patents amendment act 2020 that just uh, entered into and uh, in force on 18 march 2022 okay there are revisions of the fee ada fee naik ada fee tak ada turun lah fee ada naik so there was also under the cost for uh, you guys uh, to uh, provide funding uh, to prepare some uh, a proposal for grant application etc so my pool has revised its fee or maybe uh, perhaps what they said my pool has increased the fee okay for patenting for filing a copyright and also for filing some other ip lah okay just to let you know so uh, the law says that the invention is an idea of inventor which permit in practice the solution to a specific problem in the field of technology so the, the requirement for practicality is here okay also the requirement for a solution is here it must be in the form of solution and it also must involve technicality so the use of the term the field of technology indicate that it must have technical effect and technical character okay the invention may be a product or maybe a process okay so for example this is a black paper this is a natural product of course you cannot get uh, any patent for this but you can file a geographic indication for this black paper lah for example sarawak black paper Okay, this Sarawak black paper is a registered geographical indication, GI, not patent. Huh? But you, you you utilize this product. Okay, what happened was you're going to process this. You're going to process the black paper. Okay, using microorganism and enzyme. So this involve, for example, you put in a black paper into this drum for polishing or remove some uh, the outer layer of pericap or mesocap. All, all those part of the black paper lah. You remove and then you subject to enzyme over here as well as other microorganism to, uh, maybe further enhance, uh, the taste or further enhance the flavor of this black paper. So this one is a product. So product patent. So what is process patent? Is this part? Step one, step two, step three, step four. What is step one? Step one is subject this black paper to a roll drum. Step two, subject the polished black paper to uh, enzyme treatment or to alkali treatment or to acid treatment, and so forth. Okay, so there are two part. Usually, these two part uh, come in combo lah. So if you file a patent application, you will find that in the claim section of your patent document that drafted, uh, that was drafted by a patent agent comprises these two part the product as well as the process because this product largely mirror the process therefore they can be filed together in one patent application okay now kita pergi kepada more complex example uh. you just said it's too simple black paper uh, now this is i i u n example okay so you have this um fertilizer then uh, you want to produce a coated urea okay Okay, the coated urea you use castor oil, okay, and papi polyaryl polymethyl polymethylene isocyanate to coat this urea using this coating machine. Ah, uh, yani invention. What are the patentable aspect? This machine and this product and the method of coating the urea. One, okay, and if you were to go back ke belakang lagi. You can start with pause and PEG. 
that you react with post band to produce this castor oil. Hmm. So dia boleh ke belakang ke belakang yang dia pun depan ke depan. So it depends lah to what extent and how do you want to commercialize this invention. Uh, if we want to commercialize on the quarter urea, we don't want them to know about the quarter machine, etc. Okay, fine. Then we are going to ask you the question, who going to produce this technology? Who going to produce this quarter urea? The industry lah. So the industry, we don't, we don't have the capacity over here to produce a production, to have the production of quarter urea, scan, scan, scan. Therefore, you need a pattern protection for this. And you also need protection, a pattern protection for this thing. Okay, unless otherwise you say that you want to keep this a trade secret, but we don't want to disclose. So this is the 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 the, the heart of invention. Okay, fine. Then we keep this a trade secret, but the rest of it we need to file a patent application, subject to a patent search, hmm. subject to the patentability checking lah. But usually, at, um, you know, when you go for patent search, your invention will appear not novel, not inventive, etc. Right? No, no worry. We got. We're going to come at the patentability section later on, okay? Now another example, uh, IOT in healthcare. Yang ni pun banyak, you know, for, from university. When you talk about IOT, when we talk about um, some other thing related to IOT, yeah, there's like so many invention that retrofitted with IOT. For example, smart farming system. And this smart, this is not loud, this is in healthcare. The smart farming system, you connect the sensor to uh, Arduino microcontroller. And this microcontroller is connected to a um, communication module so that it can wirelessly transfer to a server, which is on the cloud. And this cloud can share the information to an app installed in the smartphone, whereby a user can view the parameter sensed by the, the sensor that you have uh, you have put in the palm. Uh. These are all IoT, but all of them are known already. Known already, I will tell you that they, they are known already. The, the wireless transfer of data to a cloud so that it can be viewed by any third party, for example, the doctor in this case, or patient, or maybe uh, any third party, uh, the, the supervisor, is already known. It is all the gist of the IoT. It is more IoT, okay? You get a patient, and this patient uh, pakai wearable devices, for example, smartwatch, and then this smartwatch is capable to transfer data to a, a smartphone through an app. And the same data, okay, uh, can be uh, transferred to the cloud too. So at this patient, uh, they have this um, heart rate monitoring sensor, and blood pressure sensor. Hantar this information to the cloud, hantar all this wirelessly to the cloud, and then can be viewed over here, and action can be taken by the doctor through a proper diagnosis. Is that all? So the invention is still within, uh, within the ordinary meaning of IoT. There's nothing surprising on this part over here. The fact that you have assembled a uh, few devices and a blood pressure sensor, integrating them all together here to make up the whole system, it cannot justify the patentability of invention. The, for the fact that, okay, the, the communication over here is already known. It is part and parcel of the IoT, the transfer of wireless transfer data to IoT, etc. So this is where if you're involved in this field, you have to do something surprising more beyond the ordinary use of IoT. Uh, okay, because of what? Because you need to fulfill to meet the requirement for patentability. Later on, I can share with you, okay? So, near example, wireless slope monitoring. In Hebrew, famous. Okay, you know, we see A, B, C, D, E, F, C, some kind of Most of them, okay, revolve around this uh, slope monitoring. But it's a good thing now, because, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, ground movement, so we need to have uh, more uh, slope monitoring to alert the user about the landslide. So, this is an example. Uh, the use of string potentiometer, okay, and then you have a sensor, and this particular communication, we transfer whatever data the sense through this potentiometer to a cloud. And this cloud, through a proper communication channel, send this to an admin or backend system or directly to the user. And then they have a processing engine at the back that will trigger whether or not uh, landslide will occur. 
uh, if yes, and then we send an, another uh, to the cloud, and the cloud we send to a siren over here to alert the user in the vicinity about the potential landslide. Okay, or you just submit to the uh, IoT, and that's it. The user will know, and the authority uh, will send SMS to um, the registered user. So all of these are known, you know, already known. So kalau you bought this invention, make sure that your information uh, revolve beyond this, beyond this, you know, not just a simple IoT transfer information to cloud and then get it. And then you want, you want to file a patent application. Unfortunately, that will not able to satisfy the patentability requirement under the law. So the patentability requirement is very, very substantial. It's very, very huge. You must meet certain requirement only then you can file a patent application. Can, you can get a patent granted. So uh, remember, um, the definition of invention, talk about the solution to a specific problem. Okay, the, another keyword over there, which is specific. So the problem that you're going to, that you are trying to address must be specific enough. Okay, in this case, the example on the screen is not specific. Specificity refer to, for example, if you were to zoom at this string potentiometer, and then in the prior art, in the prior technology, the string potentiometer provide a uh, false alarm uh, because of the data, the accuracy, and the sensitivity of the sensor used in this potential meter. Therefore, you, go, you plan to address the problem with this uh, conventional string potential meter by improvement A, B, C, and D. So that improvement include the use of uh, additional sensor, the use of a modified sensor or the use of a different string. Okay, the material of the string here, you change to something more elastic with higher sensitivity that um, in that when the ground move or when there is any ground movement, the string will be reflect, deflected and the sensor will capture the data and send it to the cloud. And this is where also another improvement that you made at the processing engine. Okay, the processing at the back end, like the software part of it. So uh, if it is just get the sensor and then get a lookup table, the probability of uh, having lens, right? That's common. That's very common. In order for you to go beyond that, it must have extra intellectual level. It must have extra criticality. So the invention must be critical. Takala with this only one data you put in there and then you want to conclude there will be a lens slide. You cannot. <clears throat> okay. So you must have a multiple parameters to conclude the lens slide. For example, uh, the weather, uh, so the meteorology uh, information. Okay, what else? Um, what type of other sensor they're going to put in here? There's so many sensors. And the parameter here, and you apply machine learning. And this machine learning is unsupervised machine learning. Uh, that is all. Itu barulah, wow. Kalau setakat there's a normal uh, IoT, cloud transfer, wireless transfer, that's still ordinary. So must be critical when you I know have your research graduate. Kalau you are the master student, ask them to be critical. I know yes, a supervisor must make sure that they are critical. And literature review also must be made properly. So usually, based on our experience, when we check, we go through the paper, etc. The one pet, the one database, the the only database that going to miss out most of the time is patent database. So the slowly miss out patent database. At the literature review, the like guys Hoppers or Index Journal or Chen et al. It's changed 2019 and etc. You review other people's papers, but you did not review patent databases. So that is where you're lacking. And this is where okay, you, you have difficulty to file a patent for invention. Okay, imagine this. Huh? Okay, so this is uh, the paper database, ordinary paper database. Huh? Okay, and then this is patent database. Okay, 
So you were going to file, you have this FRGS or PRGS, right? FRGS, okay, you apply. And then you come out with paper, you do literature review only for paper databases, article general paper review, not a pattern database. But at the end of the, this journey of the PRGS, you expected the research output to be patented. How come? Because at the first place, you tak check pun pattern database ni. You missed out this part. When you miss out this part, and you tak preserve the novelty, etc. There you go. At the end of the journey, you punya, pat you punya research output from this PRGS or any other grant, right? Cannot be patented. Sadly and so unfortunate. Because of the lacking on this side. Tak ada. So, only down the road, you check in front, can you check the pattern search for this, conduct pattern search, you see. I'm sorry, prop, the, you know, the pattern search reveals that your, your invention reveals negative, negative opinion of your invention. That means that your invention is not novel because of you know, whatever project that you, that you propose to be uh, conducted under this scheme, PRGS, is actually there in the pattern databases. This particular whole slope monitoring, somebody has filed a pattern for that. Just because you tak jumpa dalam paper, paper sorry, paper, your scopus, your AI triple E, therefore you are happy, yay, it's novel. And then you go down the road, actually at the end of the day, you cannot follow a pattern for it because somebody did follow a pattern over here and you did not check this. Uh, so that's why kita kata, the term of short sendiri is here. Okay, one of the reasons why the term took keluar because of you know, you are within only your circle. You check only within your circle. You check and then you're happy. And then you continue with the proposal, with the grant, and you get a grant. And it's not the, the responsibility or obligation of Mohi to check the pattern of invention. It's your burden. It's your responsibility to make sure that you preserve. But unfortunately, tak boleh. Uh, that's what happened. Lah. Maybe not at uh, UM, maybe at some other but I'm sharing the scenario that rampant yang terjadi. And then, unfortunately, yeah, it's gonna waste the, the grant, the grant lah. Uh, for example, you got one two million, one point two million. At the end of the day, you don't have apa apa You cannot get a patent. Of course, you have the human capital. You produce master students, two master students, two PhD student candidates, etc. But at the end of the day, that can benefit the community in the long run. For example, patent. No, we cannot get it. Okay, so not everything under the sun is patentable. Okay, we thought that we come up with this invention, this patentable. No, no, not all. Number one, discovery, scientific theory, or mathematical method cannot be uh, protected. It's not patentable subject matter. Uh, okay, so uh, what else? Sorry. Plant or animal varieties are essentially biological process for the production of plants or animals. This one? is non-patentable invention. If an invention involved within this particular uh, field, and then you want to follow a patent application, unfortunately you cannot, okay? I, I mean, going back to the first one, kalau you're, in, you're, uh, you're involved with a new discovery, scientific theory and medical method, then you want to follow a patent, this, this one cannot lah, obviously. But, remember, the practical application Okay, the practical application of, for example, mathematical method can be patented. I'll give you an example. Okay, and then uh, an example of mathematical method adalah machine learning. So machine learning, whether AI can supervise ke, and supervise ke, all type of machine learning falls under mathematical method. Okay, under the definition of the patent law. Lah. So the machine learning per se alone, you cannot cannot get a patent for it. But the practical application of this machine learning, for example, tadi, the uh, slope monitoring, right? Slope, slope monitoring come up with a lot of sensor data. So the data you subject to the machine learning that have been trained, and this machine learning come up with conclusion that hey, the possibility of landslide, that practical application of machine learning can be protected under patent. But kalau mathematical method alone cannot. Scientific, scientific theory per se, not possible. At least here in Malaysia, lah, I mean all around the world, lah, cannot. Okay. Schemes, rules, or method of doing business. Uh, ni tadi jawapan kepada uh, pop quiz. Okay. 
method for doing business is not allowed here in Malaysia. You cannot file a patent for a method or for someone doing business. It's not allowed. Okay, performing mental acts or playing game, uh, method of playing chess, method of uh, playing um, sahiba, uh, scrabble, and so on. Okay, cannot. Uh, method of uh, playing uh, football. No. Diagnostic, therapeutic, and surgical method of treatment for humans or animals. This one is not allowed here in Malaysia. Some countries allow this part, but Malaysia and other European uh, countries, that also countries based on European law, they don't allow this. Okay. Last but not least, invention that may affect public order, good morals, or public health. Ini tak boleh lah. Uh, for example, you want to call a pattern uh, for COVID, coronavirus strain, Omicron, cannot lah. Uh, 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 chemical weapon, so cannot. Anthrax, anthrax bacteria, you want to file a pattern for it, cannot. But a method of detecting anthrax bacteria possible, you can get a pattern for that. Okay, EMC squared, tak boleh. Okay, but the application, practical application of this is possible. Method of playing crossword puzzle, not possible. Okay, this is uh, Okomas. Uh, I don't have time to explain this, but you can Google. Harvard Okomas is very interesting um, issues. Uh, you know? Okomas has been used for uh, developing drugs for cancer treatment. So, yeah, the issue was ethical issue uh, because you breed the mouse and you want to kill the mouse. So, that's the issue. Uh, okay. And, and, okay. And this is not. Uh, essentially biological mouse. Ah, remember, uh, this is not is essentially biological process. Remember, that's why lah, benda ni boleh dipatenkan. Mouse ni boleh, onko mouse ni boleh dipatenkan because it is not essentially biological process. There are the gene, gene line yang dimasukkan dalam ni and a few other components that that constituted as man-made living uh, mouse. Okay, very interesting. Nanti you tengok. Kalau ada soalan, baru akan jawab. So, I leave it to you guys lah. If you have going to know more, you can ask. Okay. So, section 36, talk about the rights of honor of pattern. Siapa? Who are the owners of the pattern? I, I, U, M. And how about me? I am inventor. So, inventor is not the owner of the pattern. Nah? You have to remember. There are two different things. Ownership belongs to IUM by virtue of employment. Okay, U2 is contract employment. And inventor is the, to honor the inventorship. Uh, but these two have to coexist lah. So IUM alone cannot commercialize the product because the brain are here. Uh, so the brain with inventor. So they need to uh, actively communicate with each other how to commercialize this technology. So this is where they come with a policy to remunerate the inventor in terms of whatever commercialization that take place. For example, that you get 1.2 million for one commercialization, okay? And then there are portions to the group of inventor. So some university have a 70, 75, 25, 70, 30, and so on. So they, this will encourage more commercialization activity as well as more R&D, okay? It depends on, on the policy that I, I you have. You can always check with RMC, see what they have. Okay. If you want to suggest anything that okay, in order for me to do this, I need to get more. Okay, of course, you need more incentive, then you can suggest them, okay, increase the fee, and etc. Okay. So the rights of pattern owner, in this case IIUM, is to exploit the pattern invention. The pakataan exploit is very, very big. Okay, very, very big. Okay, what is it? Okay, to make, import, offering for sale, sell, use the product. Okay, talking. Okay, doing any act refer to the above in respect of a product obtained directly by means of the process. Uh, if you have a process pattern, the product came out from the process is also one of your right. Remember the black paper? Uh, the natural product of black paper, okay, you cannot claim that because it's naturally uh, occurrence, biologically occurrence, uh, natural product. But the polished product, the improved black paper, the uh, flavor 
enhanced black paper uh, is produced from the process and therefore you can exploit the product to assign or transmit the pattern this is if you want to sell you sell a pattern to third party this one involves transfer of ownership uh, so to conclude license contract does not involve transfer of ownership ownership remains at iium uh, but you, you grant a license to uh, company a okay for a certain period of time after that if the contract or the agreement is not renewed and they fall yeah you have to they, the licenses to exist uh, and so on there's so many things uh, about the conversation of this so you can have the exclusive licensing non-exclusive so licensing what are the clauses that you put in there etc etc but one thing that i want to share with you that make sure that your legal advisor or your pegawai undang -undang is well versed in ip law in order for them to draft agreement assignment agreement or license agreement our experience is that when we went through have them to back through there's so many loopholes in there that and then also go beyond they went beyond the uh, rights Compared to the right of patent owner, this is very very important. Otherwise, your patent, uh, your agreement with a license seeker, with a third party can be considered null and void, or maybe some process can survive, but some cannot survive. Okay, it is also important for you to know the patent prosecution timeline. Ini sangat penting. Otherwise, you tak tahu apa yang terjadi pada your patent application and yeah, we start to wondering now what happened uh, to my pattern i found in 2011 still not yet granted. okay so um the first thing need to be done is due diligence so due diligence involves pattern searching pattern checking to make sure that your intention complies with patentability requirement and other requirement under the law so this happened uh, at the pre-filing stage within three to four weeks so meaning that Okay, if you want to publish a paper, uh, you have to consider this one. You can ingat the timing there. And uh, once everything is ready, pattern has been drafted, okay, and then you can proceed for pattern filing at the mind pool. So once the pattern has been filed, you have 12 months to go outside Malaysia for overseas protection. You must go uh, file pattern presentation within the 12 bulan. Okay, some other, you go direct filing, or you file a PCP, okay? So your patent application will be kept confidential for 18 months. Nobody knows I, IUM has filed what in 2021, sekarang, because it's still within the confidential period. So, and no examination will take place, okay? So examination will only take place after 18 months. Uh, so after this 18 month period, it will open for public inspection. Public can obtain a copy of your patent application submitted at Micro Baya. Few, uh, few, few ringgit are depending on number of pages, and can can submit the observation. Okay, so um, this is one point five years already. Okay, and then uh, you usually like average in Malaysia three to four years from the publication period only then you can apply the examination report from the examiner mm, that's a standard time now because a limited uh, manpower and micro examiner etc so also yeah so many other things uh, so bureaucracy etc <laughs> not to mention so you can expect within four to five years but you apply the first examination report uh, so this is why the delay uh, the delay of uh, your uh, patent granting because of the timeline and the sini. Okay. Of course, you can expedite the examination using expedited examination. Within two months from this 18 months, you can dapat the examination report. Uh, so if it is adverse, and then you have to make sure that they tend to clear, only then you proceed to granting. Kalau tak boleh sangat, then we can convert to UI. So from pattern to UI, you can convert. UI is a petty pattern, it's a small pattern. It's added product of the pattern, same uh, under the same pattern set. Okay. After the pattern has been granted, you have to renew and pay the uh, renewal fee. For 20 years, 
starting from the finding date. Bukan starting from the grand date. Huh? Starting from the finding date. If you fall into year 2000, okay, your maximum will be 2020. So by right now, pattern yang fall in 2020 in year 2000 has expired already. So you can you can use the technology, you can uh, develop, you can manufacture without paying any royalty or consent to them. Again, any consent from them. Lah. So it's 20, from year 20 to 2020. Lah. Uh, okay. All right. So I hope you understand the timeline. Let's like, so banyak about the timeline so that you have a better idea how it works. Why there's a delay? Why pattern fall through in trade fund and taking so long? No, not just for us, but for all other pattern applicants too, for other agents too. So this is a typical timeline that you can expect from uh, my book. Okay, so there's a question on the chat box um, from Dr. Adlina of Profatina. Why is it that Malaysia doesn't accept the patent for therapeutic treatment? What happened if a Malaysian research find a way to treat COVID-19 using our tropical resources? Okay, this is where that um, you need to understand uh, the why tak boleh daftarkan, why, why cannot non-patentable inventions. I will go quickly to that slide um, so that Okay, hold on, magic. Okay, so the non-patentable aspect is we when we talk about method of treatment, okay, not the therapeutic treatment or not the therapeutic use. Uh, so yang ni refer kepada diagnostic, therapeutic, and surgical method of treatment. But if we're talking about the use of uh, a particular uh, compound which uh, of certain uh, having this active ingredient to treat COVID-19, yes, that can be patented, not an issue. But the method of administrating through oral uh, the COVID-19 uh, drug, they want to cannot be patented uh, in Malaysia. Just a twist of uh, the term, and with the twist of this term, you can get a patent uh, uh, protected lah. So this is also the important part of it. You need to get a proper patent agent to help you, uh, help you around go around with the pet non patentable invention like this. So uh, the therapeutic treatment can be patented in Malaysia. Okay. So what happened in Malaysia is to find a new way. Yes, you can patent it. It's not an issue. The only thing cannot be patented is the method of treatment. For example, method of surgery method of uh, oral administration of certain drugs to treat ulcer uh, or colon cancer. But the compound to treat colon cancer can. Uh, they the different subject matter for Fadina. Number one, okay, repeat balik. Method of uh, admi uh, oral administration of drugs. Method of oral administration of drugs. The compound, the drug itself, okay? and the use of the compound to treat uh, colorectal cancer, for example. So in Malaysia, only these two yang boleh di pattern cut. Number one, the use of the compound to treat the colorectal cancer, and the compound itself to treat the colorectal cancer. But the method of administrating the drug to a patient or a subject to treat the colorectal cancer cannot allow. A method of surgery of conducting a surgery for removing brain tumor cannot uh, be allowed here in Malaysia. It's not allowed. Uh, so, so Mr. Irfan. Yes, please. Mr. Irfan, okay. Uh, if let's say, for example, um, a surgeon in Malaysia finds a new method, a new method in doing surgery for certain kind of, of you know, uh, in, in certain operation or whatever, it's a new method. It's very unique and novel. Is that hmm. acceptable? Can that be right. patented? Method of conducting surgery cannot be patented here in Malaysia, but you can have it patented in US. Oh no, but but why? Why Malaysia is being so rigid about this? That's the thing I don't okay. understand. Are okay, we not so, applying the same law here? Okay, Malaysia based on the European law. European country yeah. doesn't allow this thing too. So one of the grounds for this is that, uh, for example, in the case of emergency, if somebody have exclusivity on the method of uh, conducting a surgery for removing brain tumor. And then in the state of emergency, 
it will cause any infringement. So when it causes infringement of patent, therefore uh, professionals or the surgeon cannot conduct that method of surgery because it's proprietary to other person or uh, to other entity. So because of that, in order to, in the state of, uh, in the case of emergency or uh, involve, involving uh, the life of human of any subject, therefore they don't allow this one to be patented. Therefore, no one have monopoly on method of surgery for removing, for example, brain tumor. So anybody can use it, but no one can have monopoly over it. That's the, okay, that's thank the... you, thank you. Understood, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, so now we move on to uh, the second portion, which is, I think, very important for you to know about the patentability of invention. So uh, under the patent law, you need to fulfill all these three requirements. Okay, number one, your patent must be, your invention must be novel. Okay, novel, okay, and must be inventive, must involve inventive stuff, as well as must involve, must have industrial application. So usually, uh, novelty refers to the newness. So the, your newness or invention is worldwide, must be checked at worldwide uh, databases to make sure that your invention is novel. So uh, once your invention is new, only then we talk about inventive step, okay? So this is why inventive step is also known as the degree of novelty, okay? So if your invention is, if your invention, the novelty invention is zero, therefore your degree of novelty also automatically zero. Lah. So that's why the primary requirement is that the invention must be novel before we talk about the inventive step. So the term inventive step here refer not to the step one, step two, step three, step four, that why I mentioned earlier, no. So inventive step here refer to the non-obviousness. Okay, your invention cannot be obvious to the person skill in the art, cannot. So once your invention is novel, we want, we're going to check how obvious your invention to person skill in the art, in this case, in view of the prior art in view of whatever prior disclosure, um, we will get back, we go back to the prior, what the definition of prior is. So all these three requirements must be fulfilled without exception. Unless or otherwise you want to go for UI, which is utility innovation, and this is not a requirement, okay? But if you want to go for pattern, which we give higher mark for session Myra, as well as higher degree of commercial ability, Therefore, you need to go for pattern. So what is novelty? Uh, this is, you need to pay extra attention because this is part that uh, when you ask your master student to do literature review, uh, this is the part that you need to let them know that, oh, novelty. Novelty in view of um, Scopus and in view of patent database. Uh, so all this while, many researchers, not IIM lah, they only focus on this part. They miss out this part. When they miss out this part, they're so happy, the invention is novel, but unfortunately, they are actually reinventing the wheel. Everything has been disclosed somewhere here. So they need to check over here too. So there's such exercise that we conducted here, at least at Patents World. We cover all of these things, plus the commercial database. Okay, so this is very important. The commercial database includes the one Shopee, Alibaba, Taobao, uh, catalog, product catalog, etc. So we have access to all of these things. So this is very important. Sometimes uh, maybe a patent agent give you uh, your invention is novel. You have to check. You have to ask them uh, which databases that you use. Is it only patent literature or non-patent literature? So if this is non-patent literature, how about patent literature? Did you check on that? So we need uh, a conclusive opinion so that um, it's, you know what you are investing for. Lah. So the money that you pay for patenting is not cheap. <laughs> so this is where that you need to make sure that uh, it's worth pursuing lah, if it's novel in all databases. Okay. So what is novelty? So section 14 states that an invention which falls within a prior art is said to have been anticipated by prior art. Uh, 
So we are, we talk about anticipation, whether or not the prior art anticipate your invention already before you come in. Okay. So the requirement is that a prior publication, the prior art, must disclose the whole of invention in a single document. Okay. So I repeat, the prior art, okay, the prior art document, for example, document D1 must disclose all the whole of your invention in one single document. Eh? Barulah your invention be considered part novel. Okay. So the requirement is that a single document. Lah. Uh, so under the law, you, um, you, not you, the patent examiner is not allowed to combine one, uh, to combine two or more patent document together. This is patent document. This is non-patent document, including your scopus. They are not allowed to combine to destroy or to kill a novelty or invention. So they have to be a single document. For novelty, yeah? for inventive step, they allow. They allow to combine. I'll give you an example. I'll get a clear view of it. Okay. So what is prior art? Okay, remember, kita cakap pasal anticipation by prior art. So what is prior art? Uh, section 14 bracket to mention that okay states that prior art is everything disclosed to the public anywhere in the world by written publication okay by oral disclosure by use or any other way prior to your filing date so that means uh, almost everything you know or perhaps i say everything 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 disclosed before you file a patent application, including your paper publication, including your literature review paper, including your material selection paper, including your in silico study, including your in vitro study, including your in vivo study, etc. All of them. Okay, so this is what I say the 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 the, the, the circumstance here. Yeah? You apply for PRGS in year 2000, just to make it easier, like right? year 2000, and then down the road. Okay, and uh, you publish one paper in 2001, literature review. And then down the road again, in 2005, you publish another paper on material selection. And in 2008, only then you go to INC, RMC, Dr. Farah, I want to file a patent for this. You submit an application. And, and remember, the law says that everything disclosed prior to your patent application. So that means that you have published everything over here in 2001, 2005, and this one can be used against your patent application, especially at a patent search. Uh, okay, so we have a special uh, scenario that we're going to explain later. So prior also include the content of domestic patent application. I saw uh, one of participants raise hand. I'm so sorry, I missed out the one. Okay, uh, somebody did somebody raise hand just now? Uh, my name is Abid. Actually, I want to ask about uh, about about the uh, which which one uh, to start with uh, either uh, patent uh, document the patent first or the or the uh, paper. So uh, I think you have already explained it. Thank you. Okay. okay thank you so much, Dr. Abid. I have further explanation to this: the tension between publication and patenting. So uh, I hope they can stay tuned. I have more slides on it. Okay. So uh, this is a metaphor for novelty. So imagine this is the prior art. Okay, the prior art contains um, a puzzle, what the jigsaw puzzle, huh? puzzle blue color, orange, yellow, and deep blue. And uh, this is your invention. So in order for your invention to meet the novelty requirement in the law, your invention must have new element. So this new element, must have the technical character, must have the technical effect, and must have the technical uh, uh, parts lah. Technical parts or technical technicality lah. So not just on this part. So with this uh, new element, it 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 distinguishes your inventions from the prior art. So with very simple element you can gain novelty under the patent side. Very simple element. Okay, what element? Okay, I can share with you further. Okay, this is a metaphor. The novelty requirement is put in place 
so that no one can pattern prior art. Okay, imagine kalau you tak ada this part, then you are basically the prior art. So now you need to come up with another element so that you are able to distinguish your invention over the prior. Okay, this is novelty. Eh? I repeat, this is novelty, not shared inventive set. The first primary requirement, novelty. So, this, I give you an example. This is a solar panel. Okay, this is your invention. Eh? So, assume this is your invention. You have a back sheet TPT using Tedla, PET, and Tedla. You have Eva Flum. On top of this of Eva Flum, you have solar cell. Solar cell is sandwiched between these two Eva Flum. Eh? And then you have tran high transparency glass, and which is encap encapsulated by frame aluminum alloy. And then you tell me that if I, this is my invention, then can you please check novelty of the invention, whether or not this is novel. And then we have tunggu tang and then we conduct a written search. Um, sorry, Prof, Doctor, this is the prior art that we found. So remember, this is an invention, this is the prior art. The prior art um, disclose the back sheet. The prior art also disclosed the Eva flume between these two solar cells. Okay. The prior art also disclosed the tempered glass. And the prior also used the aluminum frame. So what about the novelty? Is your invention novel? Okay, then we have to look to the extra features. Okay, we have to look for to this new element. Really. So this new element, okay, when we check, we have to go uh, to further disclosure of invention. Okay, now we see at the back sheet. So this prior art did not mention or fail to mention the material for the back sheet. But your invention, you use triple layer of back sheet. You use Tetla, you use PT, and you use Tetla. But this one, no. Okay, this one can be used to distinguish your inventions over this prior art. What else? Uh, Evaflum, okay, this is also Evaflum. And then uh, in front, we use high transparency photovoltaic glass. Okay, this is also tempered glass. Wouldn't this fall within this category too? So what 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 transparency you looking at? High transparency you mean hundred percent transparency. So this is also hundred percent transparency. So yeah, this is not strong enough for us to use it as a point. So what else? And then you come back to me. You say that uh, in front our solar cell is different solar cell. We use we use uh, dye sensitized solar cell. This one just a normal solar cell. Or maybe you say that oh, we use a pair of sky solar cell fund. Okay, so then now we have our cases against this. Therefore, we can establish novelty. So the priority is that the strength, uh, the strength, this one will be the, the, the point number one, the back sheet TPT will be point number two, and uh, high transparency PV glass will be point number three. So when we go for patenting, this one will be your hero. Of your invention. So the use of perovskite solar cell in this kind of arrangement that avoid the um, water leaking or water water um, uh, water uh, increase the humidity of the solar cell. Therefore, this invention can be regarded as novel in view of this prior art. Ni baru satu. There's so many prior art out there. There's so many. Can you imagine? Uh, how many prior that we have to go through each one by one just to conclude the novelty invention. If you can recall, if you have experience applying FRG and PRGS, the Bukti Charya pattern is one of the requirements. So the reason being is that so that you are familiar with a pattern database here. Okay, you're already familiar with non-pattern literature, but now Kamachan um, Tinggi will wish you to go through into the pattern detail. You have an idea what's going on in that world. In that, in that commercial world, I would say. Okay, so in this case, the invention can be regarded as novel thanks to this type of solar cell and thanks to the Tedla PT Tedla back sheet and also thanks to the high transparency baby glass. So then we can establish the novelty. So this is the reason why when we receive a pattern, a disclosure from the researcher for IMC or MC, we will require more information. So now, the more information that you give to us, the higher the chance that we can get more, uh, more features to establish a novelty, and the higher the chance you get a positive search report. Okay.
So uh, this is the timeline that we share, but we, are, we want to talk about the prior. Huh? Okay, so you plan to file a patent application in MIPO today. Okay, remember the prior art include everything. The MTE competition, your own paper or publication journal, country X pattern, uh, US, China, you know, Australia, and also your master student thesis publication, even abstract, you know. Because the abstract to our experience is that it's contain enabling disclosure. Some, dis some abstract contain also know-how. So it's very enabling and it's very descriptive. Therefore, the abstract that was published in IIUM repository must be used against your own patent application during at the stage report. Okay. So all of this. Uh, so remember uh, not to disclose. But when to disclose, we have a paper uh, scheduled to be published with funds. So we now have this and this. But I know that patent filing is taking a lot of time. Remember. Okay. So section 14 bracket 3 state about the exclusion from prior art. Okay. This is uh, number one. That clear. This is number one. If the disclosure is made by the applicant. So for a true inventor, uh, through paper publication, etc. So within one year preceding the filing date. So this is what we call no 12 month novelty grace period. Okay, so within 12 months, you need to file patent application from the very first date of your first disclosure to the public. Okay, so the exclusion number two, disclosure through an abuse of pride. Any also within one year, uh, also called 12 month novelty grace period. And the third one, Something special is for pharmaceutical industry, okay? The medical use exception. This is the third one. So remember, I talked about the Tonka Ali that uh, traditionally used to increase the uh, man testosterone level. But now, you jump Tonka Ali, which is a known compound, but in the, tre in the treatment of Alzheimer, okay? So this is where that uh, medical use exception under section 14 bracket 3, uh, will be helpful. So the use of Tonka Ali, but for Alzheimer. This is not known yet, therefore you can get a pattern for the use of this in the treatment of Alzheimer. So now the, the question by Dr. Harpy just now related to the tension between publishing and patenting. Okay, we have scenario number one, okay. 22nd March 2020, you plan to file a patent application, Harini. But your 12 month novelty grace period due to paper published by you on 21st March 2020 has expired. 21st March yesterday has expired just yesterday. But you just approached INC today to get a patent file. So remember, down the road, panjang lagi perjalanan dia to conduct a patent search, etc. So during the patent search, so this paper will be cited against your invention because it's past the time window of 12 month of the degree period. Okay, so scenario number two, okay, scenario number one is nasi dah jadi bubur lah. Okay, so scenario number two, okay, uh, your first disclosure in March 20 and March 2021 and uh, novelty grace period, 12 month will expire 28 March. The fast approaching 28 March 2022. And then huh, you file a patent application today. Okay, you finally file a patent application today. But remember, the paper that you publish over here, okay, you think that you are safe. But what if XY, this fella, came in, filed a patent application on 21st March? Hmm. You cannot disregard this person. This person, will be used against your own patent application. So under the law, the 12 month grace period only allow you to disregard this disclosure as a prior art. Like it or not, this pattern or this patent application file over here will be used against your prior art. This is where you go on the first to file basis. So go and file first. Or later on, baru you not publish, ke, you not enter publication, uh, MTE, etc. Later you can do. But it's, the scenario is not always like that. Lah. So there will be, you know, the timing, the timing um, interrupted here and there. You need to consult the patent agent, you need to consult RNC, RMC, 
uh, to make sure that they are aware about this thing and know where to expedite things. Maybe you can delay the publication or maybe you know, under review expected to be published in June and that's fine. But in this case, if it has been made, the disclosure has been made, you need to really, really secure the earliest filing date possible. So scenario number three is the one that we um, always advise our clients to go with. You, know, you file a patent application first, later baru you disclose. But that's the thing, uh, you know, uh, the, the R&D started, must started earlier than 22nd March 2021. Lah. Uh, only then you get the, the result and the output can go for patent filing. After patent file, only can you can disclose. But also you need the KPI requirement, you need to publish juga. You know, if not publish this year and then obviously I KPI my paper publication has not met yet. So you need to uh, also chase for the numbers too. So you need to plan and I know given all this information, you should now be able to plan out properly, lay out your gun chart, and know when to file a pattern and then when you're going to publish, etc. So you need also to be transparent to your pattern agent and RNC, the fact that you have disclosed all these things. So uh, the pattern agent are there to help you to strategize for your filing. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So I have 10 more minutes before I pass it to QA. So example, I think it's very interesting. Um, for novelty. So uh, imagine this is an invention, okay? A composition of composite in for 3D printer comprises, comprises epoxy resin from polyglycidine epoxy compound and a filler. In your like your invention. And then now uh, to determine the novelty of your invention, so we need to conduct a uh, 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 novelty analysis. Huh? So this is the prior art and jumper. So a prior art also a 3D printable composite in uncured polymerism, filler particle, and latent curing agent. Okay, so when you see like this, what you need to do is novelty analysis. So novelty analysis means, okay, we need to come up with table. So this table, we have to check each and every features of your invention over here against the prior art. And you need to ask this question when you conduct a pattern search. Not just pattern search, a novelty search. Okay, does this prior art disclose the features? Does this prior art disclose composition for composition for tree printer? Yes, it discloses. It disclose. Okay, does this prior art disclose epoxy resin? Uh, yes, it discloses epoxy resin. Does it yes or no? Because remember, your epoxy resin is derived from a polyglycidine epoxy compound. But this prior art failed to mention polyglycidine epoxy compound. Therefore, there's novelty over there, then no. Okay. Does this prior art disclose filler? Yeah, it discloses filler particle. Then yes. Remember, based on this prior art, Okay, no novelty requirement is that a prior publication must disclose the whole of your invention in a single document. Since this prior art failed to disclose, that means that there's no yes, 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 yes. So therefore, your invention can be disregarded. Uh, your invention can be considered novel thanks to these features, which is the distinguishing features against the prior art. Uh, epoxy resin derived from polyxylic epoxy compound uh, give novelty to your invention. Therefore, invention is novel. But how about inventive step? Uh, then we go for inventive step later on. Uh, I will skip this part. Uh, Retina Founders Camera. It's very interesting, but I don't have time. Okay. We go straight away to inventive step. Using the same example, okay, the inventive step talk about non-obviousness. Also, the degree of invention. So non-obviousness is important aspect that need to be met, must be fulfilled by uh, invention in order to qualify for patenting. Okay, the question for inventiveness only arises where the invention is novel. Yeah, the degree of novelty I mentioned just now. So this is the definition of section fifteen about the inventive step. Okay, an invention shall be considered as involving inventive step if having regard to any matter which form part of the prior under prior definition paragraph 14 bracket 2 bracket A, such inventive step would not have been obvious 
to the person having ordinary skill in the art. So obviousness is the parameter that being used to determine your inventive style. Okay, so to be obvious, the prior art, okay, or references must have every element of invention plus some reason basis for combining the prior art. So unlike a novelty where you cannot combine two, docu two or more documents, but in inventive step, you can combine this document one and document two to kill your inventive step. Meaning that if a person's clean the art were to read these two documents together, they will arrive at your invention. So in a word, the formula is that color prior art one or D1 plus D2, okay, is equal to your invention, okay, therefore your, your invention is, is obvious and not inventive. Understand, huh? Color your D1, the prior art, is equal to your invention, uh, then your invention is not novel, okay? Tapi color combination of these two, your invention is not inventive. Like, you just need to know the concept. Lah. The rest of it will be done by uh, appointed pattern agent. But to give you some idea, because you get, you're going to embark into your research journey, you're going to um, coin to so come up with a research proposal, please consider all of these things. And um, inshallah, you get a better proposal or more critical intellectual proposal. Lah. Okay, so uh, example, before we end the session. So uh, imagine this is an invention of four layer um, air purifier. Four layer air purifier. You have polypropylene pre-filter and the second layer medical grade HEPA. The third layer is activated carbon filter. The fourth layer is nano silver ion filter. And uh, if one, this is my invention, can you kind of pattern search and see what are the prior art Okay, so now we collect a prior art, search a prop, we found a prior art over here. So this prior art, okay, uh, also four layers. Okay, they have three pre, pre filters, and then we have a they have antibacterial clothes. The prior art also have HEPA filter, the prior art also have activated carbon, the prior art also uh, the, the amplifier lah, at the back. So based on this thing. Before we can determine the inventive step, we need to determine the novelty of invention one by one. Okay, so uh, we need to check. Okay, this this prior art have the pre filter. So in front we have uh, we use a polypropylene pre filter. Prior art failed to disclose about the use of polypropylene pre filter as a material to make this pre filter. Okay, what else? Um, our HEPA is medical grade HEPA. This prior art just use a normal HEPA filter, and this HEPA filter is PM two point five. We, okay, ours is zero point one microns. Okay, this is medical grade HEPA. What else? Um, in front our invention use zeolite. This um prior art fail to use zeolite, they use only activated carbon. So we use activated carbon and zeolite. So the arrangement of zeolite is different. Okay, we use uh, activated carbon uh, at the center and the zeolite is uh, radially outwardly towards the edge of the casing. Okay, well that's new. Okay, and then you mentioned too that in front we use nano silver ion filter. This one doesn't have any nano silver ion filter. Okay. So from here, there's so many heroes, okay? So hero number one, poly, poly, polypropylene grade filter. Hero number two, medical grade. Hero number three, zeolite. Hero number four, nano silver ion filter. So we need to put them in uh, according to their strength. Based on our experience, this one usually will be the main uh, the hero, okay? And followed by this, followed by this, and this. So the points, the features that can bring higher degree of uh, novelty to invention is the use of nano silver ion filter. Because if this is the only the prior art, therefore the prior fail to use, uh, fail to disclose the use of nano silver at all. 
okay the other part is there head part is there prefilter is there it's just a it just uh, a, you narrow down to polypropylene medica grade the type of HEPA that won't contribute much to the uh, inventive set and the novelty so with this novelty features uh, identified we need to determine the inventiveness of invention how obvious is this novel nano silver ion filter to the person skill in the art in the field of air purifier how obvious is the use of zeolite to the person skill in the art like you guys uh, in the field of air purifier how obvious is the use of polypropylene pre-filter instead of pre-filter to the person skill in the art how obvious is it the use of HEPA, medical grade HEPA instead of normal HEPA? Uh, obviousness is there, but you have you, you cannot deny like you have to acknowledge it. If it is a very straightforward thing, it's a substitution of a normal HEPA to a medical grade HEPA. There's nothing inventive there, just a substitution, and you can expect the predictable result. They're going to uh, be performed by this medical grade HEPA. Okay, the use of zeolite as an absorbent also being used, also being known. The person skin in the art will, will be able to anticipate their predictable result. So that's why they are false at point number two, three, and four. But the use of nano silver ion filter may not be known yet. In view of this prior, Allah, imagine this is the only prior in other. But to make it more dramatic, uh, you know, it's dramatic a bit. And we found prior number two. Uh, prof, we found a prior number two. So prior number two, okay, disclose the use of silver nanoparticle coated air filter that able to kill bacteria. Uh, this Corey.net, they did not produce air purifier, but okay, they disclosed. There are elements of motivation, there are elements of disclosure to the person skin area that will motivate them Okay, if they were to combine prior one and prior two, would they be able to arrive at this invention? That's a question need to be asked. Okay, whether or not they will arrive, or okay, then we have to look at the the extent of this disclosure. Silver nanoparticle coated air filter. This is silver ion filter. So this is the one. If I were to put another filter over here then I will be able to arrive at this invention. So therefore, in view of this prior two, the use of nano silver ion filter won't be able to create or contribute to inventiveness and invention because the person skill in the art could easily derive invention when they read prior one and prior two. Uh, the prior can go on and on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 11, 12, 20, 20 but at a reasonable number of combination. Lah. So if they are related to it, and then that, yeah. The more prior art uh, that was cited during the search, the more obvious the invention is. Lah. The indication, the signal we get is that. So that means that there are many uh, people venturing into this field. Okay, then they're looking at it. You know, but the use of nano silver ion filter is not surprising anymore. Somebody had disclosed this. And uh, in a paper document, even though they did not publish a uh, air purifier, did not produce air purifier, but according to the uh, prior art definition of the law, it must be considered prior. Okay. Example, we go back to uh, the composition in for the 3D printer earlier on that we are showed to you. Okay. Remember that we have established the novelty, all right, over here, because of the polyglycid epoxy compound, the, comp the compound which uh, uh, produces the epoxy resin. The prior failed to disclose. They are only up to the epoxy resin, yet, but they failed to disclose the epoxy resin from polyglycid epoxy compound. Therefore, invention is novel. Lah. Because of that novelty, then we have to get another analysis, which is inventive step. Uh, so we need to ask. Lah. You ask your colleague or you ask your team member, you ask a person within the field or maybe outside of the field, ask them, okay, whether or not this uh, features polyglycid epoxy compound would have been obvious to the skilled person whether they require any degree of invention. Or they would say that, oh, epoxy resin comprises so many things. Polyglycid epoxy compound is one of them. So you can use many other compounds too, not necessarily this. So it's just a matter of substitution or selection of material. 
Therefore, the invention is not inventive. All in all, the invention is novel, but not inventive. But industry applicable. And then can go for utility innovation, but not full pattern. If the, the invention is inventive, you can go for full pattern. All right. So uh, this is the windsurfing test uh, used by the court to determine the inventive test. Huh? But we're not going to use it here because it's very lengthy. <laughs> Okay, so do you agree that a sufficiently prepared invention disclosure from you, researcher to IMCRMC, IIUM, plays a crucial role in determining the invention's patentability? So the more points that you put in invention disclosure, okay, don't be stingy, lah. you have to put everything there. So you put everything in the disclosure, don't hide, just put in there whatever paper you publish, just put in there. And we, as a pattern agent, we were able to pick up all the features that can contribute to the novelty invention to establish novelty invention. If there's just a little information difficult, you make a uh, difficult because difficult for the pattern agent to help you establish the pattern search. Remember, uh, any third party, including a pattern agent or RMC, MC, are not in the position to assume what its invention was, what its invention is all about. Whatever you give, that will be the basis for, as a yardstick and compared against the prior art. So the comparison based on the disclosure we see. Okay, and then we'll be ding dong again when going to discuss with inventor. We'll see whether or not you have further information that have not been disclosed to us. Okay, some uh, occasion, yes, yeah, it appears that some information was not uh, provided to RMC and they have provided to us separately. So that, that you know, will. Um, require more time to produce another round of, uh, to, to conduct another round of exercise for determine the novelty of invention, et cetera. So um, remember when you do a patent, uh, not patent search, uh, you embark in the research journey. This is the advice that you always um, you know, convey to a researcher. Uh, be a critical, be critical in your research, be creative, be practical as well as be realistic. <clears throat> All of this point and some other point that you have, we contribute to the patentability of invention plus the commercial ability of invention. Okay, so uh, I think that's all from me. Okay, we have another session for uh, Q and A. If you have a question, you can ask me now. You have a question on the chat box. Okay, so the last one from Prof. Adina. Any participants have questions? Do you have any questions on this one? Uh, okay. Um... I just okay this is Amir here okay yes, so okay um on this um, matter of let's say uh, for patents uh, for patent uh, how how do we determine um what could patent trends I mean that let's ah. say I want to embark on this research whether it is ah. of interest to many people or already not okay something like that okay okay thank you Prof. Dr. May. it's very interesting questions Okay, um, I think the, 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 um, the area coming from is that whether or not um, it's worth pursuing, whether or not uh, there are commercial ability for this, whether or not there are potential taker for this. So that, um, to answer that, we need to conduct another exercise, which is not present search, but mostly more on the market research uh, exercise or technology landscape exercise. So this technology landscape, exercise will give you some insight. Who are the players in this field? Who potentially can become your licensee of your technology? Or what are the trends of this technology? Whether or not there are people that are investing in this area, whether or not the number of findings going down or going up. If uh, you can, if I think you use Lens.org, then true for the Bukti Charan pattern, but this Lens.org, the data is, is not uh, comprehensive enough for you to to draw a conclusion from the data. It's just a preliminary data for you to put in in your British pattern, etc. It's something like that one, 
whereby you can see the trend of filing, who are the players, uh, and then the inventors is filing one, etc. What are the, the highly valuable market, uh, market, highly valuable market area that you can venture into, or maybe um, you can know what is the white space analysis. So let, let me check. If I have um, this slide, then I can share with you what we meant by that. Uh, hold on. Uh, so that you get a better view. What, what is it actually when we talk about uh, the landscape? I reach very quickly. Okay, so this is basically um, uh, some information that you can get uh, from the like, initial slide. When you conduct uh, analysis of your uh, pertaining to the technology, for example, um, okay, you can know uh, the top countries of filing, give you some ideas which country that you're going to file, and uh, this is, this is IP audit. This part is IP audit. Okay, to see how many patterns you have filed and how are they related to it, and then I'm going to show you the the, the okay. This is the landscape. This is where we know where is innovation is happening. Okay, so in this part, okay, we basically get information whether or not uh, our invention, the technology that you are going to venture into, falls in which a grid. If this falls somewhere here, that means that the invention is a uh, not a very dense, high density area. Therefore, might be some possibility for you to have some difficulty to commercialize invention because the invention is happening somewhere here. So uh, you might want to venture into, for example, uh, okay, this is green and low carbon renewable energy. So you might want to venture into this grid. So if we were to click this grid, and we'll be able to uh, find the focus area or the niche area that maybe uh, can be used by your researcher when they are um, back into the journey. Um, I will share some research university, some Chinese university. They have this information with them. And then, uh, of course, they, they, they engage with the party like us to have more information. And from here, they draw the focus area for the research in order for them, for number one, to give the internal grant or in order for them to prioritize for pattern filing and commercialization. So the, 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 the focus area is green and low carbon, renewable energy, but particularly for this niche area. For example, hybrid power plant, power control, control operators, output or active power, and then what are the areas that you can venture into. This is one example uh, for the landscape and uh, landscape exercise pattern or technology exercise. And it's also important for you to know from the market, market point of view, that give you some insight what is happening. Uh, what is happening um, in relation to the technology. I have one more slide, but this is all from the different, different um, presentation. The, I think we discussed for about the uh, sound epicentity. Let me share with you one more slide. Hold on. Okay, this is where we also can, can use this to determine where the invention is happening. Okay, using the database that we have to purchase. Like, this information that we need to purchase and give some guarantee and insight what's going on. For example, this is a cocoa market. Okay, by product type, process, etc. Et in 2019, and it's as expected in 2027, 20, additional uh, um, growth of uh, global cocoa market. So it's worth for them to venture into this area, continuing what is uh, in demand or in need. For example, <clears throat> cocoa butter for use in pharmaceutical, confectionery, bakery, okay, what are type of uh, market segment, etc. Semua benda ni ada dalam market analysis uh, me. Hey, thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, there's a question on the chat box. Uh, okay, it's from, from RMC. Okay, let me check. Can, the first question, can we pattern database? Database, in the nature of database is such which store data cannot be patented. 
Because number one, remember, you need to, the database need to fulfill the meaning of invention. So uh, let me go back to the slide. Okay. Database, database. Okay, remember this that we shared with you just now earlier on. Okay, can we pattern database? Whatever you want to pattern, number one, you must fulfill the meaning of invention. Is this pattern based? Is an idea of inventor that permit practice a certain specific problem in the field technology. The fact that it stores the data is not a technical impact. It's what it does. It what it does, what it's meant for, the storage of data. But when what if you talk about database that able to authenticate the user login and then can able to do the encryption and data decryption, yes, that is patentable. But not the meta database, but the meta the matter of encryption and decryption of the database. Question number two: Can we pattern a framework? Again, the same uh, exercise uh, you need to do. What is what do you mean by framework? Is it SOP? Is it uh, a form of uh, guidelines, a form of a guidebook, etc.? A form of concept? Is it still a concept of framework? So number. The first hurdle is that you must fulfill the minimum invention. Is this framework a premium in practice the solution to a specific problem? Is it this framework solve a problem in the field of technology? If yes, and then what is it? The technical effect there, etc. Et uh, so, uh, uh, because I can I interrupt here because on the database, huh? on the database though, uh, is I, I believe the question is not about the database, it's about the data. Let's say uh, research data. Um, Okay, let's say research data on this one, right? On black paper. Okay, so we do some experiment. Okay, and then we get some uh, data on research paper. Basically, maybe, maybe uh, um, black paper masa hujan, something like that. Okay. Okay, uh, can we pattern that, the data? Okay. Okay, thank you, Prof. The data stored in database, the data itself, uh, okay, if we to go, uh, the data itself, the data itself is not does not have technical effect. But the practical application of the data can demonstrate some technical effect. Therefore, to answer this, if you're talking about the data alone, okay, the data, the, the, the numerical, the figures, etc., I'm afraid that it cannot be patented. But the practical use, the practical application of this data into, for example, machine learning, into for uh, some other parts of the application, it can be patentable. But the data alone cannot be patented because it itself does not solve a problem until or when you use the data on a certain platform or certain application. Okay, understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bro. So, simply the framework, and I think the third question can we pattern an idea yet to have any data, just idea? Then we need to define what you mean by idea. If this idea, um, you know, you can you have an idea in your mind, for example, this black paper, the black paper can go bio rating, and this bio rating can use this and many mechanical bio rating, and we apply this and this and this. That's the idea, you know, but yet to be implement, implemented. Therefore, there's no data. Okay, so uh, if you have the idea, then you can reduce that, okay, into something that workable, and I would say that it can be patented. That idea reduced into the working, uh, work workable uh, writing, it can be patented. But if just an idea, and uh, but the data can can come later, not an issue. The data can come later to support what we claim. I give example like in silico study. You want to find um, um a compound. You find a compound through an silico study. You haven't conducted in vivo study lagi. You not conducted uh, in vitro study lagi, etc. But you find that this particular compound, okay, can dock with uh, the antigen, uh, for example, properly, and then can reach certain certain uh, uh, characteristics, etc. And you want to find a pattern for this particular compound because uh, it takes time for you want to pattern this particular compound now because it's going to take a lot of time down the road before you can come up with the in vitro or in study. Yeah. So yeah, you can find a pattern for this. Compound you found through in CICRO study, provided that you have all the support on the use of the data, including the molecular structure, including the chemical structure, including uh, whatever the functional group can be used with this.
chemical uh, uh, the compound and how it can be used to treat, for example, Alzheimer. Okay, so it depends on uh, the idea you need to deduce. Uh, Apo, what do you mean by idea? Only then we can further discuss. If you just idea, a concept, a concept that's uh, okay, maybe we can uh, tada high ujan using this uh, bekas. Therefore, it's not just an idea. Lah. So, an idea also need to fulfill the meaning of invention. Lah. Uh, so, it's idea, it's a compound from silico study. Yeah, it solves a problem, it dog well with the antigen, therefore, it can treat Alzheimer. Yeah, it can. Question number four, when we do novelty search, it will cover worldwide or only Malaysia? Because as we understand it, protection is only Malaysia. Okay, there are two parts here. Number one, patentability through novelty search. The second part is protection. There are two different things to, in, this, in this situation, with this question. So, so the novelty is worldwide. So that means that, you must have your invention must possess novelty uh, everywhere in any parts of the world. Okay. And one, the protection is territorial in nature. So, like I mentioned earlier on, the Maipo. So, if you find only Maipo in Malaysia, the protection will only be Malaysia. Okay, give you an example. Um, okay, IIUM uh, have invention A. Okay, so this invention A. Uh, they file a patent, uh, they go for patent search. So during the patent search, uh, the databases are worldwide databases, including patent literature and non-patent literature as well as commercial databases. So do, uh, upon checking, invention A is novel and inventive and industrial purpose. Therefore, meet all the requirements under the patent law. So IIUM file a new patent application for invention A in Malaysia. Okay, so uh, the protection IIUM get will be only here in Malaysia. Okay, so if you find out there's a third party doing some doing um, uh, manufacturing or copycat or invention in Thailand, but you don't have any protection in Thailand, you as a patent owner here in Malaysia cannot stop that fellow from doing uh, the manufacturing works there in Thailand because you have no legal standing there in Thailand, unless otherwise the product come into Malaysia. Lah. Okay, so if you found out that and you are still within the 12 month grace period, you can extend protection there in Thailand to stop them doing, uh, from manufacturing the product and sell the product as well in all, all over the world. Okay, so another side of the story is that the person or the fellow in Thailand even though they can manufacture your product in Thailand because of you don't have any protection in Thailand, they cannot get a patent application file granted in Thailand or in the elsewhere in the world for a similar invention. Because remember, the novelty is worldwide. Okay, so you have the novelty here and you file a patent here in Malaysia. When a patent being filed, the patent will be published in the government gazette or in the IP journal. So when the patent is being published, and uh, the other person on the other side of the world, when they want to file uh, a patent application for similar invention, they still need to conduct a patent search too. They will find out that, oh, IIUM has filed a, a patent for invention this, this and this, but in Malaysia, but not in Thailand. Remember the novelty requirement is worldwide. So this fellow in Thailand also cannot get a patent for that, but they can produce, they can manufacture and they can sell uh, in all other parts of the world except Malaysia. That's how it works. Okay, I hope it's clear. Are the solar line? Is there any question from the floor? So usually for university researcher, this is the part that um, the tension is here. La. The tension is here. And uh, based on our uh, uh, records too, okay, so um, many IIUM uh, research work, when they want to go for patent filing, is stuck here as scenario number one. Most of them, if not all, most of them, stuck as scenario number one over here. 
So they fail to preserve the novelty of invention. And when they want to file a patent application through INC, RMC, the patent search reveals negative opinion. That means the invention is not novel, so they stop. So uh, improvement need to be done as immediate as possible because we need to seek out the earliest funding date. But at the same time, uh, the fund has been exhausted. There's no more fund. The student who previously conducted the, the research work has gone back to, for example, Bangladesh or India or, India or their home country. And number three, because of uh, so many other reasons. Huh? So because all of these things, we, we cannot, uh, we have lack of freedom how to help you strategize for patent filing. So at the end of the day, the best uh, option that we can go is through utility innovation. So even though it is a utility innovation, we still can commercialize the invention as well as patent uh, commercialization. It's not something that have to stop you from commercialization just because it's your eye. No. You know? And uh, it is a provision of a specialty they're only available in a few countries, you know, utility innovation. Not all countries have the utility innovation. Uh, US doesn't have it uh, in like, in, uh, in this region, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia have this provision for utility innovation. That means that, okay, so they protect a small invention, especially from a uh, inventor or university researcher or for SME, as long as they have a protection for invention here in Malaysia. The licensing, the commercialization still can take place as usual. It's not a big issue. Uh, I think talking about commercialization, I think um, I'm going to share with you some uh, some part of the commercialization line. Hope that the video, uh, no, the matter that how we can do the commercialization. So this is um, uh, a house like IUM. Uh, so in this uh, IUM premise, the door. Is governed is handled is governed under the purview of the INC RMC lah. So what happened was adalah dalam ni so many IP, right? Patent, ID, trademark, copyright, the secret. So the the challenge is that for you to bring this technology into the market in the form of products, in the form of processes, in the form of services, you have to bring this into the market. Be it through spin-off company or you want to create a spin-off company from university, but also possible, or you want to have a licensing agreement with a third party from that's also possible, or you want to outright sell all the entire patent or your IP rights to the third party, also possible. As long as what you can do is that you can get all the monetary benefit other than recognition, other than some other um, privileges. Huh? So you get the fullest come in, and then that will help to, uh, for the university, not just to meet the KPI for Myra, but to sustain the R&D and even to provide an internal grant to further uh, to researcher, uh, for prototype grant, the research grant. Other than you have to rely on Mosti and KPT. Lah. Okay. So uh, at the moment, uh, TRL is being used. So for the benefit of the rest, TRL is technology readiness level that uh, determine whether or not your invention is ready. Can we build it? Okay. But the big question is that uh, technology is ready, but there's no commercialization. Okay, how how do we check about the commercialization? The Prof. Dr. Amin uh, uh, raised the question about that just now. We didn't mention about market landscape. We mentioned about uh, where innovation is happening. We didn't mention about uh, the the grid. Okay, the contour, the landscape of the technology, which grid that you're looking at, and also we also need another uh, yardstick, which is a regulatory readiness level as well as market readiness level. So TRL Haja is, is, is past ready. Now. So we need to check also the regulatory readiness level, including the uh, especially for pharmaceutical uh, and the medical devices and market readiness level. Yes, Dr. Hafiz. Okay, assalamualaikum, um, Stefan. Uh, um, yes. Okay, I have, uh, uh, I need, uh, I need, uh, I humbly need your, your your kindness to 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 what do you call to correct me if I'm wrong lah about the uh, novelty right so let's say uh, let's say in let's say in one day and I say that okay uh, we we discover a new chemical that that can can be beneficial and then the chemical itself is not it's not being discovered yet and then we use the chemical itself to do the inventions such as uh, maybe icon 
to, to add, yeah. uh, enhance their, their function of icon. So, so uh, this is, so for example, uh, is it, is it, can it, it, can, can it be considered as novelty or? or so this is a new chemical. Uh, new chemical. New, okay, uh, for example, refrigerant. La, refrigerant. Yes. It's a new new refrigerant that can be used to uh, for uh, uh, heat exchanger. Something like that. Something like that. I'm, I'm not I'm not in that field, but but I'm just thinking the example. Uh, is it the is it the is it my example is novelty or not? Uh, based uh, on okay. your your understanding. Okay. So to determine the novelty, we need to find the prior art. So we need something to as a basis for comparison against something, your invention in this case. So if you have your invention, which is the new refrigerant, so it can be used for aircon, we need to find, uh, to conduct a pattern search to determine the novelty. What are the prior art? Is, is this uh, chemical refrigerant, for example, this chemical known, but known in other, other fields, but not known in the aircon, not known, have not been used in the aircon industry yet. So uh, we need to check on that part. So if there's none, if there's none in the prior art, therefore your invention can be regarded as novel and inventive. But if there's prior art talking about uh, the use of the this chemical, for example, for heat exchanger or for power plant, for uh, something else that can carry uh, can, can can do the heat the exchanging the heat exchanging. So therefore, it may be novel because the use is in the aircon industry but may not be inventive to a person skilling the art because the use of this uh, to carry heat or to uh, cool down certain area or maybe in, in the heat exchanging field is already known. So in short, we need to find the prior art before we can include the novelty. Mm, okay, thank you. Thank you, Sefan. I understand. So I think if I can add that this prior art, also you can conduct your own. Do, do you have the chemical structure? You have the refrigerant, just do a quick Google search, Apache Google, or you can uh, go to Google Patterns and then just do it quickly. Okay, there's a compound similar structure, but not used for this. And then, yeah, you can get a second opinion. You go through the uh, pattern agent or pattern counsel through INC, get a second opinion whether or not it can be used. If this totally new, only then would it for you to proceed. Otherwise, to proceed with the research for the research. Lah. Otherwise, then and there's no point like you need to come up with a better idea to for the decision okay and i got it thank you mr and you're welcome so coming back to this we have the trl we have rrl also we have mrl so uh right now i think many you are aware about all this thing already so just that uh maybe they are lacking on this part lah, these two part market readiness level and very good Regulatory level. It's easy for you to nominate the level or oh, market market readiness level, level five, level six. But you need to substantiate the level with a proper data, etc. So at the end of the day, if you want to go, you want to push for the mark for the commercialization, for the fact that we know uh, the technology is ready, regulatory is checked, the market is there, therefore it will lead to the commercialization. Okay, when the market is there, just the matter of you to go for the negotiation. How you negotiate with the industry, how to, uh, what do you mean, um, how to uh, get them on board, and what are the bargaining sheet that you have, what are the royalty that have to pay, what are the, you know, everything. As long as they come on board, and then you can kick, kick start uh, the journey for the competition from that point of view. Lah. Okay, so uh, this is another thing, lah. I mean, talk about commercial, very interesting. So many products out there are technology push rather than market pull. Okay, so if you come up with a product and then we strongly suggest you to, you know, uh, find the market first and see what are the pulling factors of the market. You know, not just a technology pull push, meaning that you have the technology just because you are surrounded by that technology around you. Okay, therefore you can use it. Okay, come up with another invention which has, which is uh, lacking in terms of marketability. Okay, so uh, uh, if there's no further questions, then I will pass the floor to Dr. Farah. Let us switch on the evening video. <laughs> okay, Dr. Farah, it's over to you. Okay, let's begin again. Inshallah. All right, alhamdulillah.
Uh, we have successfully here and see a lot of inputs from Encik Irfan for about three hours. Uh, agak ada masa dah dengan IP insyaAllah kan. By now, I believe many of us have more confidence uh, on matters related to IP. And, and hopefully, insyaAllah our researchers can try to focus to do research, research that worth uh, to file an IP. Okay, maksudnya tak short sendiri. Kuranglah, kurang short sendiri tu. And masuklah myself. Uh, we pray that we will be guided to the best IPs to work on uh, with intention to exploit our IPs for a successful commercialization. And because I believe only commercialization can help our invention to reach intended end users legally and for mass use. Okay. So inshallah, we finally can contribute to our ummah through this way. So many uh, ways to contribute to ummah. So so one of it is to commercialize our IPs, inshallah. So I think with that, allow me to close our webinar session with Surah al ans and Tasli Kipara. Thanks to all participants and thanks to our speaker. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.